Many great drivers got their initiation into auto racing right here. It wasn't just another race. Checkered flag breaks down the final curtain. And I don't believe in... On a tiny pinpoint on the map of the United States, in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. The NASCAR All-Star Race will be hosted at North Wilkesboro Speedway in 2023. Each corner was really a lot different. Well, it was a cool little track. I think everybody's excited to be back. There's nothing there but history. The legend's living up to his name. Special energy, nothing like it. I can't think of a more perfect place. The roots are still alive. And there is a great view of a moment in history. We welcome you live here on FS1 and our Fox NASCAR coverage from North Wilkesboro Speedway. Our continuing coverage of race tonight, an all-star event that will take us back to the future. 24 of the best drivers in an all-star event in a new wave approach to an old school track. Race day is on the scene, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Temperatures in the 70s, the sun will be setting at 8.30. We're gonna go 200 laps and we're here to bring you closer to it all. We're sitting above the start finish line in what is victory lane. And nice to have you with us and nice to have some of the fans who have hung out all day come up to watch us with Clint Boyer, Jamie McMurray, I'm Chris Myers, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is gonna join us in a moment and later a couple of the other drivers as well. It's great to see you guys and coming off the open, we'll get to that at tonight's race, but how special is it to be back here after 27 years away from racing? It's unbelievable. You know, you think about the revival I was here, you know, four or five years ago. We used to drive our Harleys up here and look around. If somebody was in town and wanted to see something cool, I was like, I'll show you something cool. Let's go look at North Wilkesboro Speedway. I thought it was dead, boys. It was not. They brought it back. The hard work of so many people. This puts it right back into grassroots. You want to talk about roots? There's no roots stronger in this sport, the heritage, the history behind it, than North Wilkesboro Speedway. So good to see these fans back and loving this place. Yeah, and look, Chris, I just got here this morning. I've been watching on TV, watching you guys the last couple of days. And, Clint, you said it. It's so hard to explain the atmosphere, the environment here. And it starts from the time you get off of Highway 421, the drive in here through the neighborhoods, the fans, the amount of people for miles coming up to the racetrack. Just hard to explain how cool this environment is. Well, with all the unpredictability, I mean, the open, it kind of ended up predictable, <laughs> right, with, with Josh Berry racing his way in, Noah Gregson uh, getting the fan vote, Ty Gibbs. So you get two rookies in there. For, you just called it, both of you. What caught your attention the most? Well, you know the unpredictability. You know that it, it's going to be the bottom. We've seen the line. We know the preferred line where it's going to be. But what's going to throw the race for a loop? That race was Michael McDowell. You know, Noah Gregson hitting that wall, set off a chain of events. Haley, right, the launch he got on the outside. Don't you think for a second there's not a lot of drivers that are thinking to themselves, man, if we get back a few positions more than we want to, that outside and that choose cone rule, Jamie, I'm yeah. going for it. I thought the move of the race was not aggressiveness. I thought the move of the race was Josh Berry pulling to the inside, letting Ty Gibbs go for the lead, knowing that he was going to be able to get back into second place and not lose three or four positions. Hard to do, knowing that they're only going to take two people. Josh Berry did it. It paid off. He won the event. All right, let's check uh, some of the items we're keeping an eye on. And in case you missed it, Ty Gibbs, who's in this All-Star event, his pit crew won the pit crew challenge. Fastest pit stop time. That was on Friday here. Saturday, Daniel Suarez won the first heat race. He's finished second in an All-Star race in his career. So he'll start on the inside of row one tonight. The second heat race won by Chris Busher. So he'll start on the outside row. Both drivers looking for their first All-Star win. And again, a total of 24 drivers going to go uh, 200 laps. And there's just a lot to like about this event because you talk about not only the best drivers, but the best of the best. You talk about a million dollars going to the winner, and you talk about an old school track that has a lot of history to it. You had some all-star success, and you're thinking of the money. Well, I mean, listen, it, it's, it's cool to get the trophy, but I have the check at home still with the $1 million written on it. It's got the confetti still on it. Super cool moment. And Clint, I, I know we, we kind of argued on this earlier, 
But I was. I was all about the money. I mean, yeah. You said you had the check. <laughs> you don't have the money left. You already spent it. You had the check on the wall. It's worth nothing, Jamie. I'm telling you, these drivers tonight, they want to come back to this historic place, and they want to win in front of this sold-out crowd. That's what gets me going. All right, show me the money. But By the way, a million dollars doesn't go as far well, and, and here's anymore. the deal. This yeah. is a market. What did you just say? It's a million dollars. Denny Hamlin. I remember when Denny Hamlin said that. You know, it just doesn't ring like it used to. It's a million damn dollars. That's a lot of money. I've had people say that to me. You look like a million bucks after taxes. So that cuts into a lot. All right, hey, we do have eight drivers. We talk about this track over the years. Who's raced here? Eight all-star drivers this weekend. They weren't even born the last time this uh, Cup Series event took place at North Wilkesboro. Wilkesboro, that was back in the late 90s. So they range from age 25 to age 20. Ty Gibbs just edging out Chandler Smith by a few months for the honor of being the youngest driver and two rookies. In fact, only twice before has a rookie won the All-Star race. Ryan Newman, we heard from earlier, who missed out a chance to be in this race. And we welcome the guy who did it as a rookie, the Hall of Famer, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has uh, joined us here live. And it's great to see you. Thanks for coming over. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure to be up here. And uh, what an electric place. I mean, it's incredible that we're here. Hard to believe, still sort of sinking in. But uh, it's been. You had fun. a lot to do with that, buddy. Well, I didn't write any checks, <laughs> and I never picked up one shovel. But we did come out here and we eat the we eat the surface one time, which was a lot of fun. But got the ball rolling. Yeah, it's been fun being. You know, I just you know pushed for the idea, like a lot of people. I mean, that that there were people in this area around this racetrack pushing for over a decade. Why can't this happen? Why can't? Why not us? Right? And so it's uh, there's a lot of people that are involved and have been involved for a really long time. I'll be honest with you, when we came here in 2019 to we need to track and clean it up to scan it for iRacing. I didn't think it would come back. Thought she was too far gone, maybe? I didn't think in my mind, man, you know, we, we, what if? Why not? You know, I, I was really thinking it was it was never going to happen. Uh, Marcus is the one who actually was convinced when he stood on that front straightaway at the night we had our, our late mile stock race in August, and he looked into that crowd. He was like, we got to do it. We got to do it. Hey, what about as you've come in here, you've come back, you're in the late model race, you've walked around today. What's been the biggest surprise that you've seen that you didn't expect? Well, um, I think the biggest surprise to me is just the, the energy. I mean, I expected it, I, but it's still incredible when you come here. And we went to, a, you know, a concert the other night. We came out and raced our late model car. We, it's been a festival. The whole thing has been more than a race, and that's what you want when you're going to buy a ticket to come out here and see the Cup guys run. You want more for that dollar that you're going to spend, and I'm going to tell you, man, there was more to do. It's a lot to do. Than one person could take. You know, you had to kind of pick and choose oh. your battles. <laughs> we didn't do very good at that, Dale. We may have been out too late one night. We Overshot did. the corner a little bit, we didn't did. we? Well, you know, so much of, of sports, we have a, fans have a personal connection uh, to their teams, to their heroes, and to places here. Why was it so important to you uh, personally uh, to be the driving force and to stay on this to bring this back? I thought this was a good idea for so many reasons, but one is we need more short tracks. Okay. And, and, you know, I know the short track package has been a big topic of conversation over the last two years. NASCAR will fix it. NASCAR will always be improving like they improve everything else and work on everything else. I saw some great stuff tonight in the open. So that makes me hopeful that we're going to see a good, you know, action packed race with a lot of fireworks uh, in the in all star race later. But I, I want more short tracks. And this place is 40 minutes from the house. Everybody in the, you know, it's, we need these, you know, the, we need these races where the entire industry is here, yes. all of our families and all the people that we know, our friends are asking us for tickets. Um, this, it's very nostalgic, and the community is thankful. Everywhere you go, the community, um, everybody is so thankful for, for this to be happening. And that is unique, in yeah. my opinion. I think you make a great point because I drove up here this morning. It's only about 10 minutes farther from my house to come here as it is to go to Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I love being able to see all the families, everybody yeah. in the infield embracing it. Because when I think about Charlotte weekend, you think about all the team guys being able to be there. So that's really special. What about the pavement? It was important yeah. for you to keep this surface for at least this first race. 
Why is that? I was worried that a repave would generate a, a really challenging, mundane race for the drivers. And so with the tire that we have, when we put new asphalt down, the aero gets a little worse. Things, All the challenges that a driver deals with become a bigger problem. So with this worn out racing or worn out racing surface, I mean, we saw in the open, they can get to each other. Yeah. Yeah. If they can reach each other, they're going to hit each other and they're going to move each other up the track. And so I think that that's, I mean, that's kind of the racing that I want to see at a short track. I want to see them guys get physical. And I think this surface would provide that opportunity. Now, how long can it survive? I'm not sure. I guess if they don't have any problems, that's up to Marcus and his team. But they're prepared uh, to pave this track when it's necessary. But all of that, you know, tells me that there's a plan beyond tonight. That's all I care about is that there's this. we're going to come back. Yeah. It was important that this weekend went well. Yeah. And I would say it, it went, went really well. well. Well, we still have more. You, I remember seeing you in Darlington last week. You were excited. You said, I, I hope the racing is as good as yeah. all the buildup. And we saw some of it so far. Now the 24 of the best drivers at it tonight. What, what do you anticipate happening? Well, I hope that they're going to lay it all on the line. You know, it's a million dollars. I believe that they will deliver because of the atmosphere. So so it ain't about the money. It's it about this hey, crowd. Clint, Clint said it was about the money you. and then said it was about the money. Yeah, so thank he said you. both. Thank They'll you, be Dale. happy. Whoever gets that check is going to be happy about the money. <laughs> right. But I believe that the atmosphere and the energy here is going to is going to instigate. Elevate. Yeah, it's going to instigate some things out on the racetrack and everybody's going to be you. the everybody's going to want to be the person that wins this race. This is this is the first all-star race in a long time where we really had that kind of energy. We're in the groove, so to speak, Dale, you and I. That's what that says, Jamie. Larry McReynolds compares tonight to one hot night, the first night they had life yes. at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Great comparison. And how special that was, and I thought it was a great comparison. Yeah. All right, well, we thank you for coming by Absolutely. and being the driving for us, and we'll catch yeah. you later on NBC in June later you in the year. You bet you. All right, enjoy the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with us, and we're going to continue live. We have a lot of, oh, and a couple of legends, and then there's Michael Waltrip. But Daryl Waltrip is going to call the race, and the king is here. The grid walk is later, and we're just getting started. We're live at North Wilkesboro Speedway. Thanks for hanging out with us. NASCAR its racing roots in North Wilkesboro, and we're giving you a peek at what's around the turn. First up, Jamie McMurray sits down with Ross Chastain as he shares how the highs and lows of this season have made him into the driver he is today. Then we'll take a hard left down memory lane as Jeff Gordon and Ray Evernham relive the last North Wilkesboro race. That's just before we hear exactly what this track means to the history of the sport from Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin as they build their own legacies here. Plus, last week's winner, William Byron, joins us to commemorate his best season yet. It's all ahead as race day rolls on. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Get on this level. Rafael Devers leads the Red Sox. Wow, are you kidding me? As they take on rookie phenom Corbin Carroll and the Diamondbacks. Or it's an NL Central showdown as the Reds battle Gansby Swanson and the Cubs. Monster shot! It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. Daryl Waltrip comes down and wins the first Union 400 at North Wilkesboro. Other fans in other sports are going to realize that there is a home court advantage even in racing. This is North Wilkesboro. Junior kind of likes to run good here, and matter of fact, he insists upon it that you run good here. Fitting that Darrell Waldrop should reign at the last short track race he'll run for Junior Johnson. Man, I'm so happy. It's a better day, Tony. I love it. And we're live at North Wilkesboro Speedway, and there is, yes, Darrell Waltrip is up there with some of the great legends, the Hall of Famer, former broadcaster with us, who still chats from time to time with us. It'll be calling the race with Mike Joy and Clint Boyer tonight. He's boogity boogity to a lot of success here at this track, and it's all the family. Let's check in with uh, Michael Waltrip, uh, who is talking to his older brother. Big brother, let me just ask you one question. What about this vibe? What an event. I have never seen anything. I've been coming here. Well, I came here for a number, a number of years. First of all, I never saw this many people here. And this place is amazing. What they've done in a short period of time, it blows my mind. 
I can't believe how great this place looks. Well, I'm telling you what, I'm looking forward to you being in the booth because you are a legend in NASCAR, but particularly this racetrack. Ten wins, you were so good here. Why didn't you tell me what to do? I did, but you didn't listen real good. <laughs> no, no, but listen, you know what made me feel good? I was walking with Richard Petty, and they didn't even know who Richard Petty was. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard Petty was pretty good here, too. Oh, he you was. had to beat him a few yeah. of those times. What are you looking for tonight out of this All-Star race? How much action do you think we're going to see? Well, you know, people. I think people realize by now that you're going downhill into the, into the first turn. There's a lot of wrecks that happen in the first turn because you forget how much speed you're carrying into that turn. So I think we'll see a lot of action in turn one. Uh, I don't know who's going to win. It's a pot, it's a pot luck. But uh, I'm excited. I can't be up there with Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, me. It should be a great night. It's going to be a great night. Chris Myers, these fans are electric down here, and DW is firing them up. Go! All Go, right. fans! Thank you, Michael and, and Daryl. And, uh, yeah. It's a good time. Well, there you go. Ten All times right. the winner. We love that. Hey, back in September, last time they raced here, September of 96, a pair of future Hall of Famers, Jeff Gordon and his crew chief, Ray Everham. They won the last race held here, and it was a race to the checkered flag at a race against time. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. <laughs> What's up? Good to see you. What the heck? What is this? Got the paperwork. You brought notes. Yeah, well, I was hoping that Rick would give us a car that we could go back and run this race with, <laughs> but I saw I still got all the notes. I don't know if that setup's going to work today. Yeah, it's, it's worked. It's, you know, nobody's beat it in 20-some years. <laughs> the last Winston Cup race at North Wilkesboro. I remember going there and just going, what in the world is this place? It was a track that I thought was pretty difficult, tough to understand how to drive it. But we knew, 1996, this, this track's going off the schedule, and we had one. We had one last chance to go into the fall and, and get it done. Everybody is here. At the end of the day, we sure would like to be the last one to win here. It wasn't a bad day for us. We led 200 laps. <laughs> that was the car that we built that had the trick rear suspension. Oh, hold We're on a second. <laughs> you had something trick in, in the back yeah, of the believe car? believe it or not. It was legal for three weeks, you know? <laughs> Let each other alone, Earnhardt was short pity, and I had to pass him. Hey, I always love passing Earnhardt. That was not one of my favorite things because every time you and he ran together, something was going to get damaged. There is no way that Jeff's passing him easy. No way. Well, ne there never was an easy Earnhardt pass. <laughs> and here goes Gordon once again, takes the lead. And the drop of the checkered flag here in North Wilkesboro brings down the final curtain. The victory here to Jeff Gordon. Certain places were important to me to win at. Where the true greats won at, we also won there, so that means a lot. I mean, this is North Wilkesboro. I'm not supposed to win at North Wilkesboro. I wanted to win there because of who had won there before. And to be respected in the sport, I felt like I needed to win at those types of tracks. And North Wilkesboro was definitely high on that list. What's neat is that, that we are finally getting time to sit and talk about those things, because while we were doing it, we had no time to talk Never. about it. We had no time to think about it, so now we can reflect. You're going to be waving the green flag. I'm going to be driving the pace car. I'm sure we're going to be reminiscing about that day in 1996, so that's going to be cool. I'll give you one to go so you can get a good jump on those guys, maybe lead the first lap in your pace car. Just remember, even after this race, we're still going to hold the record because of the points race winners that's there. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Can't take that away from us. Yeah, a little irony, Jeff Gordon and part of Hedrick Motorsports, and they, they with 10 wins, lead in all categories of their drivers winning all-star races. But he, Gordon was 25 years old when he won the last race here in the 24 car. William Byron, who's now 25 years of age in that 24 car, we'll be talking to him in a moment, has a chance to make some history as the Hendrick domination continues. Oh, absolutely. And, and in favorite, in my opinion, William Byron has become the favorite each and every week. I mean, he is on fire winning races, winning stages, leading laps, doing everything it takes to be a champion in this sport, Jamie. Yeah, and I loved seeing that piece right there because for me, Jeff Gordon, Ray Everham, that was like the heyday of before I was a driver. I remember watching those. Jeff Gordon won 10 races in 96, 97. 
13 races Dominant. in 90. It was yeah. unbelievable how good those two were together. So it's fun to see them come back together. And I love that Ray brought the setup sheet. Yeah. That's something Larry Mack would Hadn't do. been beaten 20 some years, he said. <laughs> I love that line. That's a that's a great duo, a great tandem. Speaking of uh, William Byron, and you ran through some of the, the numbers, the driver of that 24. We're going to see him here. Uh, his, his, the only three race winner this season. First this year came in Vegas. And then in Phoenix, completing the hat trick in uh, in Darlington, and that's why he wears the big hat as we uh, tip a hat, taking a look at some of his success. And we welcome him uh, to Victory Lane here. Doesn't have a yet have a uh, for a young driver an all-star win to his credit, but with four Hendrick drivers in the race tonight of the 24. It could be uh, his night. He's stopping by to see us. We don't want you to get a big head. That's why they're wearing <laughs> the big hats. Amazing. Look what you started, you. William. Good, Clint. Have Look all good. the trends you could have started. It had to be this one. <laughs> I it love it. you perfect. <laughs> I would have would have messed my hair up, so you'll let me slide yeah, Myers, a little bit. That's Myers, that's no, really embarrassing it. you wouldn't wear the hat, by I'll the way. I'll wear it backwards, so on my skateboard. Uh, anyway, thanks for coming by. Yep. Uh, congratulations so far on the three. You're kind of like uh, quietly having an outstanding season. Clint mentioned, and Thank maybe you. not to you, but with all the other things going on, I'd be leading laps and stages and getting, getting the victory. So maybe just assess how you feel about coming into this race. You know, I feel I feel good. I feel like we've had... Uh, a better season to start than we expected to. We had a great year last year winning a couple races, but uh, certainly to win three races this early is is ahead of schedule. And uh, we're coming in this weekend hoping to have some fun. You know, this is an amazing atmosphere. Uh, I personally have never seen a race like this. The fans up this close and personal. So I'm just looking forward to the night. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, we just heard that saw the piece with Jeff Gordon, Ray Everham, and I remember you saying that Jeff really helped you out at Martinsville. He's the last winner here. Is there any advice he gave you coming to North Wilkesboro? Yeah, he told me um, he told me about the elevation change. That was a big deal. Just knowing that you know, turn one's downhill, uh, the way the car changes there. And then he told me it's going to be pretty loose in if it turns the center. <laughs> so, uh, that setup you guys were talking about with Ray, he, that's it must have been uh, pretty free. But yeah, hopefully our car turns good tonight, and uh, I can manage the rear tires and. Keep uh, keep the tires on it to, to last for the end. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think um, I think you guys are gonna see comers and goers, and uh, the track is just so worn out. It's it's gonna be tough. Ran the truck race the other day. Uh, did you learn anything from that? Was there anything there that you can apply to this race today? I mean, not really. I wish we I wish we were uh, maybe a little more competitive in that race, but um, we certainly we made a lot of adjustments and uh, the apron came in. But you know, with the cup car, uh, the rear shocks and everything just bottoms out so hard. Uh, when you hit hit the apron, so I don't know if we'll see as much of the apron come into play, but um, certainly searching for grip all night. Um, those those patches, the sealer patches, are going to have all the grip, so you're going to be chasing that. Saw a lot of aggression in that race yeah. earlier. Yeah. That open That's had a lot of aggression. Yeah. Got them elbows up. Are yeah. you ready for that? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do what it takes. Yeah, it's going to you're going to have to. The, the atmosphere. I know you guys have been talking about it, but the atmosphere. And just the the energy around the race is going to make us do some some things that we're not used to. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. You know, did what did you observe in, in the open that might help you here? I mean, you're going to go 200 laps, not not just 100. Yeah, I think um, those guys, you know, they beat and bang. I've been in that race before, um, and you you tear up the right side of your car yeah. trying to get, get in the All Star race. Then you tell your team, hey, can you fix it up? Am I going to be okay? So uh, those guys are those guys were you know grinded to try to get an All Star race. You know, you don't want to miss this race. It's like missing a, a high school party. What about watching Michael McDowell and Ty Gibbs? What were you thinking watching that whole thing going? Did you see it coming? Well, that looked like NASCAR to me. That was fun. <laughs> totally that, was, did. that was awesome. I, I texted somebody said this is NASCAR <laughs> racing. So it was cool. Now the bump and run is definitely in play, right? You're going to have yeah. to do it. I think it's going to come into play uh, towards the end, especially if you're if you're just a little bit faster than somebody. Um, but, you know, maybe with the tire fall off, there could be some uh, you know, maybe it won't take that, but I think it will. I think the fans are going to egg it on, and They'll I think it'll go crazy if you happen. win the race that way. I yeah. mean, you want to be out front with or is there's that is that, tire, is there that chance with the pit stop that hey, maybe I don't want to exactly be leading where the crew chief has to make that guess. You know, I think. I mean, the good thing is my crew chief's going to be aggressive. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't care about about losing tonight. He he wants to win. He wants a million bucks. He'll so, go for it. Yeah, he's going to go for it. He already told me that in the in the. Uh, in the hauler. So he gets the million we'll or you get Does the million? Does he want to be up front? What do you mean? Does he want to be up front? Of course he wants to well, be up front. And that Jeff gonna... Gordon expects that 24 to be up front. Yep. As we do we all of us. When you have pit decisions to make. Good luck. Thanks for coming. Thank congrats you. on, a, on a great year. Yeah. And the, yeah. the bigger picture. Good, good luck tonight, great, buddy. Thanks, guys. Great plan. Can we take these off now? Yes, you, My you guys, God, You guys William. are good sports. What have thanks. you done to me? Thanks for putting those on. He usually wears the big hat. We'll see if he's back here in victory lane. But we continue live from North 
Wilkesboro, yeah, Super Speedway. We're here. It's live. It's happening. Uh, Ross Chastain. Yes, it's been a you know a great story with William Byron winning races. And who's the bad guy? The polarizing figure. He races aggressively. And uh, we'll have driver introductions from our own guys introducing him. Hey, this was this morning. Clint Boyer and friends. Moonshiners ride to the borough in remembrance of this area's legacy of moonshine. Hey, say, hey, we're talking about the roots going all the way back. Motorcycling from Statesville to North Wilkesboro in this track here in North Carolina, a distance of about 40 miles. Guys like Kyle Petty, Rusty Wells, many others were along for the ride, and uh, we're here now. Quinn, I hope you brought some moonshine for Jamie and I. Buddy, it was so much fun to be able to do that, pull that off. I threw the, the idea across the table of Marcus Smith a few weeks ago, and he's like, we'll do it. So uh, that's exactly what we did. Rode in here with about 100 of my friends. We uh, burned a lap around the racetrack. It was so much fun. Cal Petty, Jamie, he makes one lap and comes out and says, lost his, what, a second and a half out there in the racetrack. lost a second and a half in that one lap. <laughs> you but, uh, to you be know. able to do that with 100 people and roll in good. here and make that lap, um, you know, it's just an old school vibe. And, man, it felt good to roll up through the mountains with a Harley. Yeah, there were a lot of people uh, coming in on, on, on Harleys enjoying it. All right, so we heard from uh, the guy who's won three races this year at William Byron. And there are Ross Chastain fans, but some of them may not be on the track. Yes, he's been aggressive. We've counted a number of incidents with different drivers. He was second in points last year. He's become the new bad boy, the villain, the bad hat of uh, NASCAR, the polarizing figure. But he's a successful and aggressive driver. Jamie McMurray sat down to talk to him about it. I'm so glad it's like another uneventful day in your life. Let's talk about it. I think you can ask any driver that he's wrecked or been involved with him. He, you know, he doesn't have to be that aggressive. He's going to make a lot of enemies. It's hard to win a championship when you've got a lot of paybacks out there. Nine straight races, Ross Chastain has had a confrontation with another driver on the track. I must have missed some of those, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember nine in a row. Wrecking ball came in and made his three wide at the last second. You know, there wasn't enough room there. Turned by Chastain and around they go. Rob, what a Probably needs to get his butt whooped. Oh, he got Gregson high. You guys can't drive. I'm sick and tired of it. Chastain connected. Oh, he the fence. Good job. Three races to so that one car is taking us out of. A lot of blame come my way, and not all, not all unwarranted. I, I know that. What you've been doing has created a lot of buzz. We're going to race for a million dollars this weekend, and, and nobody's really even talking about that. They're talking about what's happened at Kansas or Talladega or, or last week at Darlington. When you hear those guys say that, what crosses your mind? I don't want people to dislike me, and, and you know, nobody wants to be hated. I'm not comfortable with everything that I watch the replay of and I see myself do. I want to be better about that. I'm gonna risk it all. If you look up YouTube, what you're going to see is not who I am. It's not always the crashes. It's not always the aggressive driving. I'm not this jerk to them all, like during the week. I'm just not that guy. It may look like it on the track, but those guys know who I am. I'm nice to these guys. They're, they're nice to me. And then if on track something goes wrong and I overstep or they overstep, then we'll work through that. But winning races will ultimately cure all of the questions about where could we go? Where can Trackhouse grow to? There's been somewhat of a pattern of the same thing happening. Is it going to be different, do you think, going forward or not? That the past definitely affects the opinion of the present, of everybody involved. And I'm comfortable making other drivers uncomfortable. And that's a tough balance whenever it adds up. When enough of them are uncomfortable around me, bad stuff has happened and, and, and is going to happen. And I know what everybody wants, and I'm going to try to do that. I'm not a machine, though. I can't just dial it down like with a knob. It's 2%, I, right? I can't. I, I, I'm human. I think the really big question throughout the season is, how do you race differently now than maybe you did? Like, what's your mindset with all that? Tune in Sunday night to North Wilkesboro, man. The last line says it all, guys. I spent 45 minutes at Trackhouse this week talking to Ross Chastain, and what we're seeing is just who he is. He feels like he's worked his tail off. He's been grinding to get in this position, to get in a good car, and I know they had meetings this week. I know people talked with him, wanting him to change. 
I don't think one thing's going to change with him. I think he's going to race the same way he has all year long. Well, you certainly grilled him pretty hard. I can, If you needed some grit there, you got it with those <laughs> questions. Man, oh, man, you're never interviewing me again. But I'll tell you what. I like what I see out of Chastain, you know, and, and, and I like it for our sport because you make highlights doing that. Um, you clean up those mistakes, right? Some of them are mistakes. When you don't come out of the other end in a victory lane, that's a mistake in my opinion. You've got to be able to get to your in victory lane. Keep that aggression. I love the aggression, but it has to end up right here in victory lane. If not, Listen, it's a problem. One of the most interesting things I've heard drivers talk about is Kyle Larson talked about he thinks Ross Chastain can become the most popular driver racing the way he is, and he's wrecked Kyle Larson three of the last four <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Incredible. I love that he said he likes making uh, other drivers un uncomfortable. Will there be payback at an all-star race for him? Will he get booed or cheered by the crowd? It's time for all-star introductions live. It's been 27 years, but NASCAR is back. Here we go. We are so happy to see you guys. Look at all the kids in the crowd. Good to have you guys back. How about you, D'Angelo? I'm so excited because we get to go back to traditional short track racing. <laughs> How about this guy? College Football Hall of Famer traded in the helmet for that hat. I love it. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I see Petty wearing the hats. I see Austin Dillon wearing the hat, so I figured I needed a hat. Where's your hat? It looks good. <laughs> and I need a hat for sure. <laughs> it's a lot of good looking hats out here. There is, there Let is, me see there. them. Oh, yeah, I see all you guys. So I, I was under the impression that this was something like the Kentucky Derby. Hats, glasses, and beer was something that you needed at a NASCAR event. Am I not right or am I right? All right. <laughs> it is time to meet the 24 drivers that are going for the $1 million in the All-Star Race. All right, D'Angelo, we're going to introduce some of your boys. I know you love this sport. I, I'm super excited about it. I, you can't, I'm going to see if you can tell who's my favorite by how I introduced them. <laughs> Fans, you put them in the show. A rookie from Las Vegas wins the fan vote, driving the 42 for Legacy Motor Club, starting 20. for Joe Gibbs Racing starting 23rd. Ty Gibbs! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he's already picked up one win tonight. Now he's going for the big one, the winner of driving the 48 for Hendrick Motorsports, starting 22nd. Yes, Barry! <laughs> Piloting the iconic number 43 for Legacy Motorsports, the three-time in Austin, Texas, driving the number 45 for his new team, 2311 Racing, from Corning, California, starting 20th. It's Tyler Reddick! making his fifth all-star appearance, driving the number 47, starting 19th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Making his third all-star appearance, 
Sports driving the number one for Trackhouse, the Watermelon Man. He rolls 18. under his belt and two wins already this season driving the number five for Hendrick Motorsports he starts 16th He's the 2017 Cup Series champion out of Mayetta, New Jersey, piloting the number 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing starting 12th tonight. making his third all-star appearance, driving the 23 for Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin, rolling 10th. Driving the number 11 for Joe Gibbs Racing, starting 
ninth, Diddy Please welcome the 2012 NASCAR Cup Series champion, driving the number six car for himself from Rochester Hills, Michigan, starting eight, Brad Keselowski! Driving the number 20. He's the 2017 Truck Series champion, and tonight, starting seven, Christopher Bell. He leads the way season with three Cup Series victories, hailing from Charlotte, North Carolina, driving the 24 car and starting sixth, William. in the all-star race tonight. He drives the number 14 for Stuart Haas Racing from Mitchell, Indiana, starting fifth tonight. Jay Frisco! He's the 2018 Daytona 500 champion driving for Richard Childress Racing, the man in the three machine starting fourth. Austin He's the 2016 All-Star Race winner and defending series champion, driving the number 22 for Roger Penske, starting third tonight. He's the 2015 Xfinity Series champion and two-time cup winner from Prosper, Texas in the 17 machine, starting second. Thank you, Adam and Jamie D'Angelo. What a scene. Glad you're soaking it up. We're alive and get it closer to the All-Star Race, the 39th annual event. Drivers, start your engine. 75 years at a speed. I'm talking fast, faster, and fastest. All-Star kicked off at
In 85, that's 38 years of magic. Back in North Wilkes, Barrel Speedway in 96 when it last happened. Back to our roots, return to the glory. We had to flash back to a classic. The All Star gave us winners that without a doubt were the best in the lane. Stars like Rocket Man, smoking Rowdy, all definitions of what's in the name. Earnhardt the Intimidator, one in three times, and Jeff Gordon did the same. But when you win four times like Jimmy Johnson, there's no need for a nickname. We got our own Fox All Stars too. Your first ever all-star, that's if you never knew. Hey. Assemble the crew, it's time for the bright lights. And the winner, you go home action, you come to see. Second means nothing, this is for legends. NASCAR All-Star 23, speed up. Special thanks to PL for that track. And we welcome you back to race day on FS1, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, as we're counting it out to the start of the all-star race. Let's have a quick check on the Coca-Cola Racing family of drivers. And Daniel Suarez in 2018 finished second in the All-Star Race. Has a good front row shot tonight. Austin Dillon at his fourth All-Star Race. Regan Smith is with Denny Hamlet and Chase Elliott for a talk that includes celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Coca-Cola Racing family. Twenty-five years of, of Coke drivers. You've been one for 18 years now. Your first year Coke driver. When you look at the list of guys that your names are associated with, the Dale Earnhardt's, Dale Jarrett's, Bill Elliott's of the world, how much does that mean to be a Coke driver? It's certainly surreal to be now part of the Coke family for 18 years. I, I'm wondering if that's the longest stint that anyone's had, but it's just been a dream of mine. I never forget rolling off the grid for my very first race at Kansas, and I got. Rusty Wallace beside me, Jeff Gordon in the row in front of me, and Mark Martin in front of him. And I'm like, this is a video game. This, this just isn't <laughs> real that I'm out here on the track with these guys. And oddly enough, when Chase was younger, rooting on his dad, we were rooting on the same guy because, you know, Bill Elliott was my guy. I, that's why I have number 11. I, I, when he drove for Junior Johnson, uh, I just latched onto that number, and I've been number 11 my entire racing career because of Bill Elliott. For me, it's just cool to hear that, right? Yeah. You know, to, to hear a, a fellow competitor that um, was a fan of dad's. And I remember, you know, growing up and, and him being part of the Coke family for many years. I was trained as a little kid. If it wasn't a Coke product, I had to take the <laughs> label off of it. So, but it's definitely special, and, and I appreciate them letting me be a part of this group. Family in racing, guys, it's a, a huge part of racing. I know there's a lot of sacrifices, a lot of things that family has to has to do for race car drivers. What's that meant to you guys? Well, I, I mean, I know that sacrifices certainly my parents made to help me get to, to this point. And it was able to pay off. And now, you know, my parents get to enjoy the life that they probably should have been enjoying years ago. Yeah, I mean, obviously my path was much different. My dad had a great racing career and, you know, wanted to support me and what I wanted to do. And, and fortunately, uh, that has worked out to this point, and we're, we're grateful for that, too. North Wilkesboro, tons of history at this place. You think we're going to bridge some generations this weekend, some gaps maybe of, of young fans and old fans and just everybody coming together? I, I think so, for sure. I mean, anytime we go somewhere new or a new venue, there's always excitement to build around it. But when we go back now to somewhere we were at decades ago, you're certainly gonna have the nostalgic fans really be interested in it and um, hopefully rally around it. Just have a place that has held so much history within the sport, not completely go away. I mean, I think everybody involved in this should be super proud to not let this one join that trend. A lot of tradition there. Denny Hamlin, by the way, uh, the odds, uh, for at least the Fox bet Super 6, uh, the favorite coming into this race. And, and you know, the uh, this year, only one favorite going into the race has actually won the race, and that was Kyle Larson back in Richmond. So what do you guys see when you see this board, Jamie? Well, Clint, I'm going to go for it. I like Chris Buescher. We have no history at this track, but he's one for one racing here, won his heat race last, last night, plus 1,400. Who you got? Man, I like the kid that was sitting here with us, William Byron, old Willie B. I think he's been on fire this year, that 24, last time he was here in Victory Lane. It could all make sense. All right, Larson, that does have two all-star wins. And on the long shots, this is surprising. I mean, Joey Logano, who seems to win everywhere a first time. And then you even have Kozlowski and Ross Chastain, who, by the way, got more cheers than booze when he was introduced. 
This is the first time I've ever done this, and oh. I'm going for it. Bubba Wallace in that 23 car. They boot him out there. I think he's going to yeah. put he, it in their face and take all their money and laugh all the way to the bank. No doubt he got the most booze, but I'm going to go with the guy that I interviewed for this show, Ross Chastain. The one car did not look great yesterday, but they always seem to figure it out, Clint. You don't think anybody will give him a, a hard time tonight? Because well, we're no going to find out, and he's he proved to us yes. that he's not giving an inch. How did you get out of that interview without a black eye, by the way? I, I brought the security. All right, scan your QR code, download the app, make your picks for the NASCAR All-Star Race. You have a free chance to win money from Clint, the Fox Bet Super 6 app, the jackpot up to $5,000. And the question here... Which of these, and you guys have to answer, previous All-Star winners will finish in the best position? Clint? And I'm, I'm going to go with uh, that Denny Hamlin. I think he was fast. The Gibbs cars are fast. Ty Dillon was fast. Denny Hamlin. Yeah, I like Kyle Larson. Won the All-Star race twice. It's, it's just hard to go against him. He's been fastest guy in the series recently. It's that easy, guys. Go on that Fox Bet Super 6 app. It's free to play. Put in them picks just like we just did. And you just might win old Clint's 5,000 smack it. I'd like to win his uh, money. Been fun. We got about well, it's what? free to play there. Uh, well, he's all Jamie? about the money, remember? Oh, he yeah. The money. Yeah, he still counts. His, he still has a check. <laughs> There's nothing in it. Uh, 25 to 30,000 fans over 100 acres. We're back here. It's been great. Nice having you yep. here. Uh, have fun calling the race Cannot with uh, Daryl Waltrip and Mike Joy and right now let's go to Michael Waltrip for the grid walk Mike yes it's the grid walk Chris I'm so happy here Austin Sendrick I like interviewing you you're my I like interviewing you too how you fit in that car pretty good about as good as you would <laughs> have fun in the all-star race it's a beautiful Sunday night isn't it yes sir you match my car you look good oh thank you you got the keystone colors on there Kyle Larson how you doing buddy you ready to go racing yeah I'm ready we'll uh we'll see what we got here for a million bucks Caitlin let me ask you a question. Will you shotgun a beer if he wins a million bucks tonight? Only if it's your beer, Mike. Oh, listen to there. Have fun, Kyle. I just interviewed Austin. That was fun. All right, let's go to Harv. Harv, I know I talked to you earlier, but this 29, all I can say is, wow, it's beautiful. And look, I saw you taking a picture with Richard Childress. That had to feel great. It does. And to drive this car again. And I'm just so happy that Richard and SHR and everybody work together because the fans and all of us appreciate so much what this moment meant so it's fun to celebrate it one last time it is so awesome and your smiles on pit road are the best smile little piper here we go we're gonna shuffle on down talk to richard childress randall hi kyle how you feeling buddy i'm doing all right how about you what's up that's a beautiful night night my brother's up in the booth that's pretty cool rc taking pictures with harv that was beautiful thanks for doing that yeah it, it brought back a lot of memories i just told him about uh remember atlanta with that old car I remember it well. Have fun tonight, bud. Hope you go get a Winston win, All-Star win, whatever we call it. That was all the way back to 2001. All-Star, buddy. All-Star. Let's go. <laughs> See if we can find. Here's Chase Elliott. Chase hadn't got to talk to you on the grid walk since I came back from you came back from your injuries, but man, good to see you. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah, I think the last time I was on a grid walk, I ended up in the hospital the next week. So let's not do that again. Oh, week. yeah. Uh, you think I better slip off? I her? think you should go. Okay, have fun in the All-Star race. We're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to throw the green on NASCAR's All-Star race in North Wilkesboro. How cool is that? Live from North Wilkesboro Super Speedway, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear or driven. Roots, often a sore sight. On the ground they rise, only to be noticed by a watchful eye. Till they become overgrown. Do you let them die off, or do you let them blossom into something beautiful? No, I haven't seen her banks in such a long, long time. Funny thing about Roots, they always come back. Kind of like a siren song. Oh, can't lie. You keep calling me home. Tonight, the stars of this era get to add their chapter. Grow their own roots. NASCAR heads back to its roots. Can't lie. This is North Wilkesboro. Uh, NASCAR time capsule, the best drivers of today, a track from yesterday. And thanks for being a, a part of it with all of us for this racing revival. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Burlington Fire Department Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer tonight's invocation, please welcome Executive Director of the Billy Graham Training Center at the Cove, Will Graham. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to come back to North Wilkesboro and experience another great race. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, and we are thankful that you raised him from the dead, and we confess that he alone is Lord. We commit this race, these drivers, and these teams into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome North Carolina's very own platinum selling Columbia recording artist, Cameron Marlowe. And oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the My cash is on with a Fox Bet Super 6 Stage 2 contest. Download the free to play Super 6 app and pick six Stage 2 outcomes for your shot to win. It's had several different homes and a million different formats. And tonight it's at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. It's the NASCAR All-Star Race for 2023. 200 laps and 24 of NASCAR's finest at the ready to compete for you and a chance at a million dollars. So let's go to Pit Road, beginning with Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Kevin Harvick has a new look tonight. He is bringing back the number 29 for this night only. He ran this number for 12 years, and it was his idea to run it tonight. But he had to get his old boss, Richard Childress, to sign off. His sponsor and his team all said, go ahead. Now, can you imagine if he could drive it to victory lane and win the all-star race and what will be his final event? Regan? Well, Jamie, when you think of All-Stars, you have got to think of 2022 Series champ Joey Logano and winner of the 2016 All-Star race. Always so good in this event. In fact, he's got the best average finish in the All-Star event of any driver in the field throughout the course of his career. But challenges through practice and the qualifying race for him last night. The car was loose in practice. They didn't have an opportunity to get a good read on it because they were on the rain tires last night instead of the slicks. They were on them for the entire heat race. Crew Chief Paul Wolf told me if they're going to be 
be good tonight. They've got to get this race car tightened up just a little bit. Josh? O'Regan William Byron did his part to get track time here at North Wilkesboro. Raced in a late model race, midweek finished runner up. Raced in the truck race on Saturday, had a good run there, and he got a good feel for what this track is, and he likes what he's got. He's got good track position. And remember, back in 1996, the final cup race here, the 24 went to victory lane. William Byron hoping to return to North Wilkesboro with the 24 in victory lane again. Thanks, Josh. Tonight, you have a chance to win $5,000 of Clint's cash on Fox Bet Super 6. For your chance, just download the Super 6 app on your phone, enter your six all-star race predictions, download now, and get your picks in before the contest closes. Our honorary dignitaries tonight are all members of the NASCAR Hall of Fame. This track's two winningest NASCAR Cup Series drivers will give the command to start engines. The winner of the last Cup race here, Jeff Gordon, will drive the pace car, and his crew chief that day, Ray Evernham, will wave the green flag to get the all-star race underway. There is the king, and there's DW. And we go trackside for the command. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome NASCAR Hall of Fame legends, Richard Petty and Daryl Waltrip. <laughs> Gentlemen, start, start your, your engines! engines! Woo! That's awesome. Legends. That is Governor Roy Cooper, governor of the state of North Carolina, who put a line item in his post-COVID budget to revitalize the state's racetracks. And look what's happened to this one. NASCAR's core fan base is here for tonight's all-star race at the revitalized and reborn North Wilkesboro Speedway. It's the NASCAR All-Star Race from North Wilkesboro Speedway in Wilkes County, North Carolina. The home of Junior Johnson and the scene of some great NASCAR races from 1947 to 1996. And now it has been reborn and revitalized. Chris Buescher, Daniel Suarez, who won the two qualifying heats last night, will share the front row for a chance at $1 million. Joey Logano. The 2016 winner and Austin Dillon, row number two. Chase Briscoe and William Byron, who leads the league with three victories this season in row three. Uh, Christopher Bell and Brad Keselowski, the 2012 Cup champion in row four. Row five, Denny Hamlin, the 2015 All-Star winner. And Bubba Wallace, that is the top ten of the 24 drivers that are going to square off here tonight for a million dollars. Richard Petty won 15 here, and Darrell Waltrip won here 10 times, many of those for Junior Johnson. You did not want to come to Wilkesboro in a Junior Johnson car and not win the race. Amen. So for one night only, we put the band back together <laughs> for 15 years, 2001 to 15. Larry McReynolds, Darrell Waltrip, and myself were the booth for NASCAR on Fox. Clint Boyer joins us for tonight. What an event. What excitement. What just the electricity in the air here. I think that's the, the word, the key word is excitement. I, I don't think I've in three days I've been here, I haven't run into a fan yet that wasn't excited about this race tonight. So, uh, and what they've done to the facility, it's amazing. I, I don't remember it looking this way. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it never did. I, I mean, I know walking out that back gate 27 years ago, I went, that's it. We're never going to go back there, but here we are. And what I love about it, what they've done, they've upgraded all the things that need to be upgraded, but they kept this racetrack the same. Yep. Well, hey, 
One thing's the same. As soon as you got back in this saddle, I heard you talking about, it. all right, how do we pass 10 time winner here, DW? <laughs> that is incredible. But this racetrack, you said it downhill getting into one, uphill getting into three. You said all the action is in one. By the way, in that open race, that's where she was. Well, it is. And it's because you're, I think you forget. I know I did. I forget you're going downhill and you pick up a lot of speed and you get into turn one and all of a sudden, whoops, I didn't mean to get into you. And that's what happens. But turn three, you can drive in turn three wide open. The other thing we're seeing, obviously, a lot of fall off this time the old track slick you know been a long time since it's been repaved but the bump and run she's back dw <laughs> i love that don't you i mean yes. that's, what, that's what short track eight tires are a lot better than four right <laughs> you're going to have <laughs> yeah, a don't use too many tires we don't have a whole lot <laughs> if you're going to win this race it's it, you're going to make somebody mad I can oh, yeah. oh yeah you're going to have some action it's going to get physical Wow, 24 cars for $1 million, and here's the format. It's a 200-lap race. NASCAR will wave a competition caution somewhere around lap 100, being a little nonspecific to give them room in case there's a caution flag near lap 100. You have four sets of tires, and oh, by the way, what what'd you do with your million dollars? million dollars <laughs> that you won for the, oh that's right didn't million pay, i'm sorry i didn't pay a hey, million dollars to win that 11 you would you it. knock somebody out of way for a million bucks i won 11 races here i just didn't get credit for the 11. <laughs> oh, 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 hey 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right stock up for race day and grab an ice cold bush light There's been a bunch of them sold today. I promise oh, you, they've been yeah. through a bunch of them. Why do you think the race is at night? Sunday night. So, got some heavy hitters up front, boys. Suarez very fast. This RFK bunch, Larry, very impressed with Busher and Keselowski. You know, I've been impressed with RFK, those two drivers, all year long. Keselowski, he's just been hitting the ball right down the middle every single week. And last night, Chris Busher, it didn't matter what configuration, that 17 car was good. Yeah, I, I might be a little partial to the 17, but I think he's the guy to watch. Oh, for I sure. I think he's the man. I love that car is great. They're, they have been ready. They are poised for a win, and it just might come at this big dance tonight in front of this sold-out crowd. Logano, new event. Don't ever count that guy out something new. Pace car is in. Here they come, 24 of NASCAR's best to race 200 laps for $1 million to win. Jeff Gordon on pit road with the pace car and Ray Evernham waves that green flag. We're underway and Daniel Suarez with the jump. Climbing that back straight away hill. Logano second. Busher cannot get in line. Here comes Briscoe for third and Christopher Bell for fourth. Toughest thing we've seen. Saw it in the open. If you're going to start on that outside, you've got to get down or they're going to freight train you. Exactly what we're seeing with Busher. Three wide off the corner, mid pack. Lots of action here. Mike, he, you, that hadn't changed in 27 years, DW. You, you can't go anywhere in that second group. No, but you can drive into that third turn. It's amazing how much further into turn three you can go than you can turn one. You know, and I think that's what's probably changed the most, DW. We have that patch, a traction patch down there, if you will, that where they repave, re uh, patch that track down on the bottom, grip strip all the way. Yep. Have to hook that grip strip. There you see left sides of Denny Hamlin right on it. Fourth place, Hamlin moving up. So is Byron. Bell gets in line. And Chris Busher, who started outside pole, is still stuck on the outside all the way back to 10th, 11th. Oh, okay, Mike, okay, Mike. I might think about somebody else. Let me Finally think of someone hole. else. It's early, Daryl. <laughs> Don't worry, it's early. <laughs> He finally found a place to fall in, but it took a while. It did. He, yeah. and, but Chris Pusher told me he has a great car. I, I believe he'll be somebody to have to condemn with for the night's over with. He said last night he loves this racetrack. Well, he'd be one of the first ones I ever saw that loved it because there wasn't a lot of people that loved it when we raced here. Well, he did lead every lap last night. Oh, yeah. Well, he had a great car last night. How about Logano hooking that bottom down there all the way on the apron with his left sides. Got some speed in this 22 car, boys. What do you think about Logano and uh, the first time we've been back here? And it's probably the first time he's ever seen this race track. What do you think about that, Clint? That's why I was saying every time we come to something new, he's a man for the job. Last night in heat number one, though, Daniel Suarez rolled the center of the corner in turns one and two better than anybody the whole way. Now, a lot of that. We go back to last night, rained right there on top of those heat races. I think a lot of that will change because of that, right? We had uh, wet weather tires on there, no stagger, some cars that were too tight, too loose. 
That 11 car, he just got up under the 14. Going to get by him. He's down on that grip strip and going somewhere. Well, Hamlin opened the door. William Byron charges right through it with him. Thank you very much. And right behind him, Blaney inside of Christopher Bell. Outside your door. Corner, clear. That opens the door for Elliott. I tell you, you got to do is push you guy up a little bit, and here they all come. And the best thing I like is a guy like you see Chase Elliott right here. He didn't even have to make him mad. He <laughs> let the guy in front of him push him out of the way. Oh, it's early. Oh, what we saw early. right there is what we saw in the heat races. One driver opens a door. Here comes two or three more just to keep filling that. Oh, hole. Yeah. oh yeah. You better be there to fill that hole. If you're not, it's going to take you a you long time there. to get around them. Good roll. It's centered uh, about seven, eight there. Ty Gibbs up seven spots from the start. Chase Elliott plus six with Denny Hamlin. You know, Gibbs got a great car, too. I mean, that's not a bad car. There's a lot of really good cars back in the field. I think I'll find a way to the front eventually. And I like where you went there. I like where your head's at, DW. It's going to be a long run show tonight. We know that. Saw that a little bit in that open already. 25 to 40 laps right there. That's when business really picked up. Starts separating the men from the boys there, Larry. Keselowski takes eighth place away from Martin Truex. It, it seems like the, the, it was always the same problem here. Rear tires. You burn the rear tires off the car here. We, I, I led this race one time on seven cylinders. And I would have won it if I hadn't had to make a pit stop. Trying yeah. to get the front bar back on. <laughs> that didn't go well, did Is that it? that 11th when you're talking Here comes Hamlin, about? and he uh, put a little bit of a bumper to Logano just to open up that hole a little bit. Nobody else close enough to capitalize. Larry, this is taking me back to what we had for practice even way back on Friday. Those Gibbs cars had a lot of speed in them. Yes, they did. And they also showed that speed on some long runs as well. Hamlin second all the way from ninth starting spot. Boys on the move. I don't think, I, what do we got, 12 laps in right now? I think get about 25, 30 laps. That's when you're going to see some changing. You know, that's a good point, too, DW. You know, I don't know necessarily that I would love to see my car or feel my car taking off and have a huge advantage on these cars early in the run. Might be upset on that on the backside of a run. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to have short run speed and long run speed at this place. Now, let's go to the opposite end of his well first. Here's Chase Briscoe to the inside of William Byron but let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum and Kyle Larson back in 21st Jamie. Yeah that's not typical for this race team to be so far back he started 16th he's 21st right now I talked to his crew chief Cliff Daniels before this he said you know we won the two short track races this year we thought we'd be good but we decided to try something different he said we were terrible yesterday they adjusted on it. Larson doesn't have that comfortable feeling he's looking for, so they didn't expect to be too great, and he just continues to fall. Isn't that just like a crew chief, though? Let's try something different. Give me a break. You don't want to in these races. What do you want to do that for? Right, Larry? That's it. Whoa! Stenhouse Around turned. goes Stenhouse off the front bumper of Eric Jones. We've got our first caution. Turned down across and got up high, tried to get down, and wasn't there, wasn't clear. Slid up in the middle of three and four, got high, tried to come down right across the nose of Eric Jones. Write that down, 43, 47. They will see each other again. <laughs> uh, that one, watch this. Saw it right out of the window. He came down. There would be another angle of this. The angle I saw sold a different picture than that. Well, you usually see a very different no, angle. No, no, no. Yeah, just hang well, tight. Yeah. Hang I'd tight. Say I've got to go with Clint. That was the effect. It wasn't the cause. Oh, man. We'll see. We have great replays. There it is. See, he was up the racetrack and tried to come back down to fill that void, and unfortunately, Jones was there. You think he was expecting that? I'm thinking he should have known it was coming. Wouldn't you? Well, I would have, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'd be all hunched up in that seat. So, guys, here's what might happen right here. We've run 15 laps. I go back, Mike, to what you set up with the race analysis. Four sets of tires, one on the car, three in the pits. You can only change one set of stickers in the second hundred laps. A lot of crew chiefs told me if we catch an early caution, we may take these tires off, put some stickers on, and that way we've got some 15-lap scuffs laying in the pits. Mm. There it is. See, he was way up high out of the groove and come back down. Now do you see what I'm saying, DW? Okay, okay. Well, let's move on. No, oh, now it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I see what you talking about. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> now, in the open race, we saw one team, the Wood Brothers, for Harrison Burton, experiment and put on just rear tires on their stop. That did not work well for Harrison no, Burton. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. 
I don't think that's a good strategy. But look, you got to have a good car. First of all, you got a strategy. So you got a strategy, and okay, here's what we're going to do. But what if your car is not very good? Here's some strategy. Then you got to work on the car. That's what we're seeing. Drivers at the rear of the field, they're trying to get off strategy from the leaders. 17. Hey, that's your number. 17 hey. laps complete. We're under caution in Wilkesboro. Through the Geico restart zone they go, and we are back under green. Chase Briscoe was fourth. He was the first driver to move up to the outside and use the outside lane on the choose. Denny Hamlin is not going to let Briscoe get to the bottom if he can help it. He's not. It's not quite there. Going to need to get down. Better Fill get down. a hole. Not yet. Filled. Big trouble you get hung up on the outside. We saw that with the 17 car. He's on the front row. Look where he is. Made it. No, he didn't. Nope. Joey tried to let him in. He was trying to. <laughs> tried it, didn't make it. He's in trouble, boys. <laughs> Big trouble. All right, Chase Elliott cuts him a break, and Briscoe gets in in fourth, so he ends up right where he was at the choose. Christopher Bell hung to the break. outside. Oh, oh. I'll tell you, you get up on that outside, it's just you just can't go anywhere. There's no, there's no grip out there. Whoa, Ty Gibbs way to the outside, three wide in the back. Look at this. Kyle Larson had to restart last. By 23 and in two off of the 23. Larson was too fast exiting the pits. And there was a little push there from Eric Jones. And they're all still those cars three together. wide off the four. Yep. I tell you, that 11 car, Clint, Larry, that 11 car is, is fast. Oh, he's good on that long run, just he like he was talking about that practice. And there that is, uh, that 54 car. Got his hands full. Denny's always a smooth driver. You can see a worn out racetrack. I'll give you a race car driver, Denny Hamlin. Always good taking care of them tires. Think about a track like the Richmond. Kevin Harvick got shoved aside, and that let the drivers who just got new tires oh. move to his inside and move on inside, by. Bomb 45, inside, inside. That is the view from the Hunt Brothers Pizza Cam on Harvick's car. These guys aren't going to have fenders left on them back no. here. Three wide again. Those composite bodies though, are really great about, you know, they just, they, they don't get in on the tires. And I, I really like that. Larson to the inside, trying to capitalize on all this double file racing. And here's Kevin Harvick. We have to hear it, listen to the throttle. You hear him really jabbing that gas off the floor, womp, 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 trying to get the throttle down. Can't have momentum. I hadn't heard anybody say it like a dump truck in a long time. Not <laughs> since you did. <laughs> DW in the open, 15, 20 laps into the race, drivers could only get about 60 to 70 percent full throttle. Really? Holy smoly. So there's Suarez leading. And Harvick continues to drop spots to some of those cars that fired on tires. Uh, the first of which is Noah Gregson in 11th and Josh Berry in 12th. Remember, they transferred in from the open and started 22nd and 24th. Tells you all you need to know, Larry. Tires are something. They're going to be a factor in the end of this thing. Larson watching some of these guys that came in and put tires on, lights out to the field. But what that group needs, they need this thing to go caution free until that all star caution on or around lap 100. They do not need another caution in this early part of the race. Uh, mm, Larry, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I see a lot of beating and banging going on. I know that. Kyle Larson up 10 since the restart with new tires. But you know, Mike, the, the, the speeds are slow enough that you can poke a guy and get him a little sideways. He can save the car and keep going. So I like that, too. Kyle Busch moving past Harvick, who has now dropped to 20th. What's that throttle? Much like we saw in the truck race, this boy is on the move in the five car. Kyle Larson passing people actually off of four clear down on the apron. I've been watching one of the only cars to do that much like he was in that truck race. But just look, that's the difference right there. At 15 lap tires. He just drives away from that 20 car. Christopher Bell. He's got new tires. See him down there utilizing that apron. That's the only car I've seen do that. 
They were all over that in the truck race. 14 laps on the tires for those cars that stopped at the caution flag. You watch, all these spotters will be telling their drivers, hey, this five car's making some hay down there, get down on that concrete apron, and start <laughs> migrating to it. If you can. A lot of guys just can't get down there. Man, I tell you, this Christopher Bell, he is having trouble with the grip in his car, sliding all over the place. Same thing as in his heat race last night. The first run for Christopher Bell was horrible. He just about burned the right front off it on the wet weather tires, but then they tuned it up, and he was the fastest car late in the race. Larry, just like in that open, lap 34 right here, this is where they really start slipping and sliding around, having trouble with the handling. Yeah, this is this is where it really starts to show up, and it's only going to get worse, and we've got basically 66 laps to go before we know that next known caution. Larson continuing to advance. He just passed Noah Gregson 4-11. Daniel Suarez has led every one of 34 laps so far, chasing a million dollars in the NASCAR All-Star Race. Forty-one laps complete. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. You know, it was funny, Mike, the guys last night were talking about how much better the rain tires, how much more grip they have with the rain tires than they do with the regular tires that they're running tonight. So uh, they probably got a little tire testing work to do here. Here's your Coca-Cola Racing Family update. Daniel Suarez, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, one, two, three, with Chase Elliott in fifth and Austin Dillon, 16. Kyle Larson, the man on the move, now up to sixth place. DW, there must be some history here that's 15 your experience with you three because they they ordered you up a coffee for you and the first thing these two did is backed up and got out of your way <laughs> i got a briefcase that still smells like coffee <laughs> got them together <laughs> look at these guys it's eric jones he is roughing them up tonight came to play not making any friends out there no, but I tell you, and we've said it a few times already, but that five car is closing up fast. Yeah, yes. about two, two and a half tenths a lap. Yeah, right he's, now. he's much quicker. Brad Keselowski in trouble. They are passing him. There's a look at Eric Jones at the front of that group. Uh, Keselowski missed turn one and two, got high in the corner, got passed by two cars. There's Christopher Bell going past Noah Gregson. Let's get an update on leader Daniel Suarez from Regan. Well, Mike, what a start it has been for Daniel Suarez leading every lap so far. His only complaint about the car wants just a little bit more grip. The main thing, though, the team has been communicating with him is that we see Denny Hamlin get high there in turns one and two. It's exactly what the 11 car behind him is doing, where he's better, where he's worse, how it's hurting his car, and what Daniel can do to adjust to that. Well, did Hamlin get off the bottom looking for grip, or did he miss the exit of the corner? I think he slipped up I in a big too. way. Yeah, it looked like he just pushed up and had to get out of the throttle, and that caused the 22. Joe Logano is on his bumper now. Look at this five car. Whoa. They're all just moving over for him. Now Whoa. Chris goes. You, you don't see that as somebody trying to pass on the outside here like Larson well, almost did. They were yielding to him. Two or three of the cars before him, his teammate Chase Elliott did the same thing, much like we saw Josh Berry do in the open. So of the drivers who got fresh tires at lap 18, Larson now fifth, Barry 11th, Jones 12th, Reddick 13th, and Wallace and Dillon. Remember, Larson had to start in the back because of the speeding penalty for the restart. And Here's you know what he's saying up. now? Hey, watch me now. <laughs> well, I think it just... It pushed I, up. I almost think Suarez checked up. He took it easy getting in the corner, caught him off guard. He had to climb all over the brakes and got loose. I believe you're right. But you know, back to that five car, Kyle Larson, who's all over the back of Joy Logano on the 22 right now for third. He's got to keep getting all he can, but he cannot abuse those tires. We still have 50 laps to go before that known caution owner about lap 100. There he takes third place away from Logano. He's the only car on the track still starting to see there's one I just saw running that low line on the apron off the of four. That's how he wore them out in this truck race. Well, you know, he does have that going for him. Watch this right here, truck race. Yeah, and, and the car and he didn't. looks good. And he was a late add to the truck race. Alex Bowman was supposed to drive that Hendrick truck, but he is still uh, recuperating from a cracked vertebrae, maybe back in the next week or two, uh, was at Darlington last week. But they uh, put Larson in the truck. He responded with a victory. Well, I know there are a lot of great drivers in our sport. I know that. But I don't think there's any any greater than Kyle Larson. 
He can get in anything. He can get on dirt and get. I, wait, wait till he goes to Indy. See what he does at Indy. Well, here's one of Clint's Super Six questions: Which of these previous All-Star Race winners will finish in the highest position tonight? Larson, Bush, Elliott, Hamlin, Logano, Harvick. Man, I think, I, I think Daryl's already weighed in on that one. I have. Yep. Made up my 17 mind. wasn't an option, DW. That's okay. I, I, I've switched anyway. <laughs> William Byron having Early. trouble off the pace. Well, Larson just drove by Denny Hamlin like he was tied for second place. Now he has his sight set on that leader, 99 Suarez. All the way from the back tells you all you need to know about these tires. Look at the grip he has to drive up off the corner. You hold behind here, yep. He's not going to be able to hold it off him. I don't even think they put up a fight. They just move over and let him go. Every team out here learned exactly what they needed to to the end before the end of this race. Here is Larson's pass on Hamlin for second place. But watch Hamlin. He doesn't cut down. He just stays up, lets him go. It all came from hooking that bottom like I'm talking about. All four tires grip and rip on that concrete surface off of a four. I like it. Those new tires at lap 18 are playing benefits not just for Larson, but for Eric Jones, who's just moved up to 10th place, Josh Berry behind him, Reddick, Wallace, and Dylan all in line from 10th to 15th, and they all got tires at lap 18. There it was. You saw Suarez try to hook that bottom and use that bottom, but not like him. He can put all four tires down there and get a straight run up off. 56 laps complete in the NASCAR All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro. Sweet tea, only mama knows how to make. We put the band back together for the NASCAR All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro. 64 laps complete. William Byron has been to pit road for four tires, and Kyle Busch has also made a stop under green. Byron one lap down, and Busch now two laps down. Josh Sims. Yeah, a lot of drivers are concerned about doing that green flag pit stop, but for the 24 of William Byron, they were losing just too much, struggling too much. He started six and dropped to 15. They decided they needed to come in and get tires and fuel before anything got worse for that team. Thanks, Josh. Kyle Larson is the race leader. What is his task now? Cliff Daniels, let him know. All right, your mission now is going to be to do everything you can to take care of them while still going. If we're able to lap any great, you know, you've got to keep the tires under you to make it last. If a caution came out, we're going to be putting 15 lap scuffs back on. So obviously you're in a great spot now. Get what you can get, but be very responsible. You know what he's telling me? Mind the gap. You don't have to drive off and leave everybody in the dust. They just, you know, mind the gap. Just keep a good distance between you and the second place guy and take it easy. On the flip side, his teammate, William Byron, his goal would be to at least get back on the lead lap before we get that caution, which I think with that many laps to go, 32 to go, right now he is roughly about over a second a lap faster. He should be able to get there, at least get his lap back. Well, the good news is Byron is the only car one lap down. He's eligible for the free pass. Yep. The bad news, leader Kyle Larson is about to start lapping cars. Yeah. I love that communication from Cliff Daniels. We hear it all the time. Very methodical. Um, now, mind you, he sounds like an air traffic controller. I've always <laughs> told him that. Pretty serious out there. But, uh, man, that boy means business. Knows how to lead a team and always has fast race cars got a pretty good wheel man behind it the wheel of that thing too now kyle bush also made a pit stop under green jamie yeah you mentioned that mike it's been a weekend for him rcr and this team they've struggled on the short tracks this year so randall burnett told me they did try something different here and they struggled in practice so kyle's feedback just recently was i am wrecking everywhere so you saw him come down now he is in last place now his problem, he's two laps down right now, but I think here in about four, five, six laps, he should be able to get back by the five car to get one of them back to be one down. If he doesn't cause the cost, because he's loose, man, he is sideways. Watching the battle for ninth place here, Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace from the Ford Cam. On board Blaney's Penske number 12. There's about a foot between them. Maybe two. Maybe six inches off there. Yeah, they're touching.
Martin Truex gives up that eighth place there. Here's your Xfinity fastest lap. I will say one thing about Larson's car, y'all. It looks perfect. I mean, he comes off the corner, it's not loose, it's not pushing. He's digging, digging hard. Joey Logano with the fastest lap of the race so far, Regan. Well, things are good for the 22 car of Joey Logano right now. Mike, early on in the race, told the team he was just a little bit too tight, but that's exactly what Paul Wolf was hoping for. He figured the car would come to him if he started off just a little bit tight, and that's what it has been doing. Paul Wolf on the radio, though, almost every lap reminding Joey, mind those rear tires. Be careful. We still have many more laps to go before we get to this next break. We've got 25 more laps to, uh, to the 100 lap mark, so we'll see what happens. You have a patchy racetrack like this, right? We see the patches in the racetrack. Talk about the grip strip down in three and four. Old wore out surface. That puts, that, it just spells dirt racer all over it. That's why this Kyle Larson excels. He races dirt all over the place. He was a trendsetter. I was talking about him being on that apron, moving around, finding the grip in this racetrack. He found it, and you just see Ty Gibbs down there. Every single car on the track has migrated to the line he was running. I heard a couple of drivers say dirt tracks have more grip than this track does. Some of the dirt tracks they race on has more grip than this place does. And listen, that sealer, that stuff that they glued the track together with, it's, 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 really, it's really abrasive. It's got a lot of sand in it. Now, it's, it's easy to sell Larson right now. He's dominating this race. You cannot forget, folks, he is on better tires than most of the field out here. Amen. Right. The next driver who stopped for tires at lap 18 was Bubba Wallace in eighth place. This one is thing, the, one thing Larson can do is, and I think that's what he's trying to do, and Cliff kind of told him this, let's put as many a lap down as we can. Let's get them down. Let's kick them. Now, what I saw right there, that's a different corner than I was talking about, Larry. He's all the way, see, all four tires on the concrete like I've been selling off before. He was in the apron off of two, inside much like they're, they're, they're in the trucks. And Larry, you told me, we can't do that with these cup cars. Look at this, he's on the apron. You know? and, and that's what I was told, just simply because the, the limit on these shocks, it just bottoms out, said it'll almost yank the steering wheel out of your hand. Well, I think the reason he's doing that, I think his tires are worn out. I think he's worn out his tires. He was trying to find a place where he can get a little grip so he can keep going. Well, there's no question. I mean, new ass, new concrete down in three and four, and you see the patch down here in one and two. Watch it go across. So Kevin Harvick is now the first car one lap down. Brad Keselowski, though, is about to be. Jamie. Well, just to emphasize what Kyle Larson has just done and how incredible it is. As I said, his car was terrible in practice. They really didn't have much hope for it tonight. They just felt like they couldn't find the comfort and the feel that he really wanted in the race car. He was 21st. They came in, they got tires, didn't even make an air pressure adjustment, and he literally drove to the front, gaining 15 spots. Not unbelievable, but pretty close to it. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. Kyle Larson has led 26 laps after Daniel Suarez led 54. We're going to take you Fox side by side. For every purpose, for every path, for every soul, For every season, there's a Ram. Now during the Ram Memorial Day sales event, get 10% below MSRP on the 2023 Ram 1500. I'm at the swing joint telling people that Geico has been offering savings for over 85 years. That's longer than the Buffalo Wings been around. Dozen wings. And did you know that Geico offers more? motorcycle insurance <laughs> oh, my lips are burning <laughs> oh, no, my lips are actually burning Geico over 85 years of savings and service see how much you could save at Geico.com it's too hot oh, this is too hot mate to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NASCAR Cup Series is back at Worldwide Technology Raceway, and it's time to celebrate. Experience the all-new Gateway Garage Experience and the infield fan zone. Dance all weekend at the Confluence Music Festival. Catch me, Kenny Wallace, on the big stage before the race. It's the Mac Daddy of pre-race parties. 
Get your tickets by going to www.raceway.com. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Rafael Devers leads the Red Sox against rookie phenom Corbin Carroll and the Diamondbacks. Or the Reds battle Swanson and the Cubs. It's baseball night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. We remember the men and women who serve this country and all they do to keep us safe and free. Week 7 of the USFL kicks off Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Birmingham takes on New Orleans. Then at 9 p.m. on FS1, Philly battles Pittsburgh. And next Sunday, Michigan against New Jersey, 5.30 p.m. on FS1. 88 laps complete. Kyle Larson was told, take care of your tires. The way he has done that is by opening up a 10 and a half second lead. Uh, he's about to lap the whole field, to tell you the truth. Good thing we got a caution coming up here pretty quick. In simple form, that's a half a lap. Amen. But you know, Mike, this place isn't all that different than it ever was. It's always been a tire eater. And so, you know, we had a package that was pretty good and would take care of the tires. But you've got to have the right shock package, kind of have the right spring package. You've got to have a lot of things right in order to preserve those tires. You see, they're right there in the track map. Half a track lead on second place, Daniel Suarez. That'll all get shrunk pretty quick here, Larry. And now yeah, just 16 cars left on the lead lap. Last cup race that a driver lapped the field here. October 1994, Jeff Bodine. That means he lapped you, DW. I must have been second. <laughs> <laughs> but North Wilkesboro has always been notorious for long green flag run. Forever. I mean, that's how we won a lot of races here. Just got up on the green, kept on, kept on digging. Terry Labonte was second that day. Oh, man, who wrote that? You were in the top ten. Oh, I was pretty good here. Yep. Ten victories. But Eric you know Jones, what? Ryan Blaney going at it here for tenth place. You know why I was good here? Coach Junior said, boy, you can win Daytona, you can win Charlotte, you can win Dawson, but you better win North Wilkesboro. <laughs> and the reason, Junior Johnson is from Wilkes County. And lived down the road, ten miles. Right. And you know what else he did? About three weeks, four time of the race, he go lock the gate back there, and he only one, he's the only one that had a key, so you couldn't come in and test. It all started <laughs> here. The moonshine days, Junior Johnson oh. stories, Call Family. Been hearing all about the Call Family distilleries in here, and a lot of fun memories come back to to the old table talk. But, but what about Junior Johnson? He goes to prison. He gets out of prison. He's a race car driver. Won 50 races. Ronald Reagan pardons him. The most happiest day of his life, I'm telling you, was the day he got that pardon from Ronald Reagan. That was, a, it was like a, the best thing that ever happened to Junior Johnson. Good story. Junior served time at Chillicothe, but what's most important is they never caught Junior running moonshine because they couldn't catch him. He was tending his daddy's still <laughs> when the revenuers showed up. How about this? Bubba Wallace passes Suarez for second. He was my long shot favorite. Was good Wait a minute. practice there. And you said that when? <laughs> Pre-race. <laughs> he was my long shot pick. Long okay. shot. Just thanks for reminding us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were trying to call me on it, weren't you? Huh? Well, <laughs> it's, just a long, it's a long shot. I don't care what you call me. Just call me. He's yeah. a long ways back right now, but I'm telling you, that's a good long run car, much like he was in practice. There is a lot of drivers want to see that caution because yes. right now, Kyle Larson, he's caught basically that's about 10th or 11th all the way back through Ty Gibbs at 16th. He's right there with Ty Gibbs right now. Yeah, there's a four more laps to 100. I don't know when they're going to throw the caution. 100, they said. But it's a good thing for a lot of these guys, I'm telling you. Ty Gibbs and company screaming, now, now, throw the car. <laughs> We're close enough to 100. Oh, help. <laughs> Kyle Busch trying to work his way back up through. Just moved Ryan Blaney. Now, Busch has very fresh tires, uh, but is one lap down now. Ricky Stenhouse, two down. And we expect the caution to come at the end of lap 100 after the field cycles through. On the 100th lap, which is... Lap and a half from now. Yeah, I don't know what kind of tires they put on other good years, but they must be good buys too, because I tell you that five car is checked out. But Mike, half the top six right now, three of those drivers, Larson, Wallace, and Reddick, they're ones that pitted and got those four tires at lap 18. Yeah, Reddick was down and out. 
was yep. the worst car on the track taken off. We, Larry, we both noted that. Came in, made an adjustment, now he's running sixth. But remember, as Jamie pointed out, Larson had to start tail end yep. because of that speeding violation. And yes, he had new tires, and now he's got a 12 second lead as we come to the caution coming up here. And the battle for the free pass is going to be Martin Truex and William Byron to see who is ahead of the other and will get back on the lead lap as caution waves and it will be Truex. You know who's really, really glad to see that caution? The 54 <laughs> car because he was getting ready to go a lap down. <laughs> I think 20 of the 21 drivers. Oh, amen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now let's uh, let's double check here. We had those two racing for the free pass. The question will be when did Kyle Larson lap Ty Gibbs? He might be the free pass car. So let's take a closer look at rear wedge adjustment, something that might happen on these stops. Here's Larry Mack with the Toyota cutaway car. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of wrenches go down in these back windows right here. So let's take a look at our Toyota cutaway car rear wedge adjustment. You can adjust it on the left rear spring of the right rear spring. You see the hole at the top of the left rear of the back glass and the right rear. You can screw down on the left rear. That puts wedge in. Screw it off that right rear. That actually puts wedge in as well. And how this works, the call over shock, you push all to push that down on the spring. If that's the left rear, you're putting wedge in. If you pull it out, that's taking wedge out. But I promise you here, it's going to be all about wedge in. Get the air gun. Get the air wrench. I was going to say, <laughs> my 10-time winner, and my we're, we're thinking we need four by it. I don't care what wrench you put in it. We need some dig off the corners, don't we, DW? Well, we need that, and we need a driver that's got a soft foot. So at the time of caution, NASCAR has ruled Ty Gibbs was on the lead lap. Martin Truex will get the free pass. Oh, wow. It was so close. He yes. was in the process of lapping him. Light came out before. Saved the day for them. <laughs> and, and Truex Jr. Three drivers that bear watching here, Suarez, Logano, and Briscoe. They ended up 3-4-5 here at halftime. But they did it all on one set of tires and held top five positions. Yeah, I, th I think everybody's glad to see the caution except the five car. Yeah, I think the only car that will not pit here will probably be the pace car. <laughs> He's going to be the only one to stay out. <laughs> pit. He might need tires on that thing. I won't go that far. But, you know, it's a, such a unique racetrack. And you know why it goes downhill on the front and uphill on the back? They didn't have one that they didn't, they didn't have the, uh, the the equipment to shoot the track to get it level. They had to do it ball by sight. They also didn't have the money to they run have the any equipment money. to level it. They didn't have a string. They didn't have anything. I don't know if I'm buying that. I said, what do you mean they didn't have any equipment? <laughs> Next it's Sunday, level. Memorial Day weekend on Fox, the most patriotic day in racing when the best let freedom ring. With 600 miles of high speed chaos, starts at 5:30 Eastern only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Clint Boyer and I get to call the Coca-Cola 600 along with NASCAR Hall of Famer Tony Stewart. Tony's doing a great job. I like him in the booth. He's kind of fun. Pit stops, Jamie. And Bubba Wallace, remember he got those tires earlier, up eight spots in the second. Needs a little front turn. The five of Kyle Larson says, "I'm pretty good. I don't need anything." He was very stable. They reminded him, "Do not." Road, Josh. Second stop of the day for the 45 of Tyler Reddick. His biggest thing is loose on entry, tight in traffic. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment to help him out, Regan. Daniel Suarez, the best of the car so far that stayed out on that first caution. Team complimenting him on a job well done. The car right now loose into the corners, tight through the middle, and loose off, meaning the back sliding on the exit of the corner. And here's your race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. Larson Wallace, Suarez, Reddick, and Briscoe, the first five off pit road. Ross Chastain's team picks him up three spots. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Let's start with Clint. Who are you watching? 
man, you're gonna you're gonna give me the first pick. I'm going with a guy. He's already won this All Star race twice. He's going for his third. Kyle Larson, last to first, all the way. I am not giving up on the man that started this race on the pole, Daniel Suarez. It's close to a year since he's been to victory lane. I think they made some changes. Keep an eye on that 99 car. I, 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 I kind of like this. I still like the 17 car. 17? I'm not telling you. stuck on 17. But he's running seventh, and, and then he's got a really good car, so don't count him out. I hear you. Hear, you hear what I'm saying? Oh, I'm with you. You <laughs> might not be buying it. What about you, Mike? Chase Briscoe is the highest placed Ford that ran that uh, that first stint on one set of tires. Let's uh, let's see what he can do. Daryl, I got a hint for you. He always gets to pick first. Oh, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know. He hadn't figured out it's ones to watch, not ones to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about winning in the DW. <sighs> all right, so we've got problems. Ross Chastain too fast exiting. Uncontrolled tire for Christopher Bell and for Joey Logano. Here's Regan. Well, Mike, uncontrolled tire, unfortunately, for Joey Logano. He's going to have to go to the rear. But he actually was heads up in the seat as the driver. He kept the car parked on pit road, thinking if they would have grabbed that tire before he drove away, that it wouldn't be a penalty. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. And we're going to get to watch Joey Logano come from about 17th place back up to the front. The good news, though, that car is very fast. The team's very pumped up with him on the radio about how good it is. All right, here's the choose, and Chastain, or excuse me, Suarez uh, wasted no time getting up there to the outside of Kyle Larson for this restart. Nothing's changed. I never saw so just... many notes in my life. Oh, thank goodness. I thought coffee spilled <laughs> no, again. No, no, no. Man's got more notes. He got notes from 1996. I got notes when we won that 1990 race here. I uh, don't talk about that race. So it's a new moon. Set Maybe the only night. race you ever win with that boy. <laughs> Everybody mind their P's and Q's that first hundred laps. That's out the window. It's time to get the haymakers out. Desperation time. It's going right. to set in. What will you do for a million dollars? Let's find out. 90 laps to go when they take the green. And they're off. Magic one they got they waved over that five car, but that thing has come alive. Suarez trying to get in line in third, and Reddick is not gonna let him. Gives him a little bump, and that bumps Daniel up high, and here comes Briscoe. I think the one they waved over that car was when 2021 started. They just put that <laughs> name above that door. Oh my gosh. All right, Suarez returns the push going into three, but cannot take advantage. Cars sound good, don't they? they I like do. the I like the sound of these cars. Single file back to Denny Hamlin on the outside, racing for ninth place, tenth place now with William Byron. I like what I see out of these 2311 camp, Larry. They have some speed in these cars. They might be able to put some pressure. The long run speed was good too. But I think this started with their strategy. When they came to pit road at lap 18 and worked their way up through there, now they've got the track position. So Hamlin finally gets in line behind Ty Gibbs in 12th. I mean, it definitely, the strategy worked in their favor, right? I mean, it could have went the other way. It didn't. And they were certainly the benefactors. Who pitted on that lap 18? All three of your top three right there. Yeah, and you know, we, we haven't said much about Wallace, but there he is running second, and, and, and the car looks pretty darn good. And here comes Logano from the back after that speeding penalty, and Truex, who got the free pass on the caution, being the first car one lap down. Oh, <laughs> starting to get. It's picking up, DW. It's the bump and run. And he bumped him, but he didn't run. <laughs> Patience is over. Frustration setting in. What, what, did, what did Logano say? What would I do for a million dollars? Clint, what does Kyle Larson have to do to take care of that race car and maintain that lead? The thing that I like the most about Kyle, and you've heard me say it because I've said it a thousand times, that low and straight exit that keeps both of those tires plugged into the racetrack, that's where all the drive comes from. When you exit these corners with wheel in it and wants to lift that left rear, take weight off of that, that's going to burn them tires up. I, th I just think he has such a great feel for the car. I, I think that dirt racing certainly doesn't hurt anything. But I think he just has a great feel for what the car is doing. I 
Yeah, I think if he sticks with it, I agree. His feel's going to get him somewhere. I believe you're right. Yeah. We're on to something. Josh Berry stuck up high. He's going to lose two spots here. Hamlin got by him. Harvick got by him. And now Austin Sindrick is trying the inside on the 48. Hey, hey, mark that because I said I thought I agreed with Clint. Oh, I'll mark that down. Yeah, mark that down. Josh. And remember, the 48 Josh Berry won the open to get into this race. Felt good about his car in that one. But as far as this race, he's been really struggling. So during that last stop, they made a whole host of changes, hoping that they hit on something that can help him out. But he continues to fall back, guys. All I know is that five car, that sign on the back of it, that million dollars getting bigger and or smaller and smaller. Now, I'm going to tell you, for somebody to beat him, it's probably going to be on a restart. They better put the bumper to him. <laughs> Might be the last time you see him if you get a restart. <laughs> put the bumper to him. Here comes Busher to the inside of Briscoe. Oh, oh come on, Busher. Briscoe got a little high there, got in the wall a little bit. Chase Elliott wearing that back bumper off, moving him up the racetrack. Going to get to him again. Oh. Shot him way up the racetrack there. That was a pretty good hit. It takes a big hit. These cars have a lot of tire underneath of them. That's one thing probably different from even, you know, my day to your day, DW. You used to just barely tap on them and you could get them loose because it was light on their feet. This thing with that massive tire, an inch and a half more rubber than we used to have, it takes a shot. I agree. Byron outside now with Hamlin and Harvick trying to strike. Of course, that would be a fight for the free pass should the caution come out between Byron and Kevin Harvick and that group back there. I'm going to go back to something. I just watched Kevin exit on that apron like we talk about. Is there something with the setup, Larry, that you can help make that car float over that? You know, thinking about the five and how he's able to just master that apron and, and run all over the apron. With some of these guys, it really jolts their car and throws it all around as they cross that. It, it could certainly be in the shock settings. You know, every car has the same shock absorber on all four corners, but the adjustments is almost unlimited what you can do with these shots. So when he exited that corner, it really, you can hear it kind of slam and, and throw the car around. Boy, he can't turn. No. Nope. Well, you rhythm. Thank you. Watch his wheel. When that thing goes wheel lock in the center and he doesn't move it anymore, see that? No good. Tell all sign that that thing's tight. Those front tires aren't gripping. No oh, good. All right, let's move to Chase Elliott. Just for a kind of a different look here. Elliott in sixth Chase place. Three and a half. Same type of way, having a difficult time. And look at where his line was. Yeah. He just would not roll down the hill, turn back across, and, and get him that drive like you see on the five car. Wheel locked in the middle. Well, I, I think what happens, a driver complains about being loose. They put wedge in the car, it makes it worse. I think some of these cars just have too much wind. You, know? you get to change and you know, chasing an exit, and, and it is well, you you made my center worse, and now the exit's worse because the center's worse. Exactly. I'm just worse. Worser. You do that a lot. That you know, that used to happen with me at Richmond all the time. Yeah. You chase that forward drive off of four, and lo and behold, now I'm too tight in the middle. Go back. Do I do? Do I dare tell you to free this thing up? No, you take a round out of the left front. You put a round in the right rear, and you take a round out of the left rear, and you will set sail. Hey, he just did your job, Larry. Yeah, but there's no taking out of the fronts anymore on this deal, the way uh, this works. Uh-oh, we're in trouble, DW. <laughs> okay, okay, well, we'll go back to the back. Christopher Bell got uh, up against Brad Keselowski there. Remember, Brad is one lap down in the six. See, Mike, that's the only problem with having with Larry up here. You can never you always got to be on your toes about setup because he knows. Larry McMillan knows setup. It's, guys, an, it's an ever changing evolution. I promise you week to week. You two both know how to win here. Ten for you and two for Larry. Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 70 laps to okay, go. Okay. Kyle Larson with two all-star wins trying to join Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt as second on the all-star all-time list as we go Fox side by side. Okay, cut it. Ray Maliazzi here. When you need parts, eBay Motors ensures a guaranteed fit. 
see, you'll need headlights oh. and a bumper. At least you can skip the car wash. Just go to eBay Motors. The check means a guaranteed fit. Let's ride. And this is ready to go online. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick survey. Who wants the internet to work pretty much everywhere? And it needs to run smooth, like super, 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 super smooth. Hey, should you be drinking that? It's decaf. Because we're busy women. We don't have time for a lag or buffer, right? And who doesn't want internet that helps AI do your homework even faster? Come again? Sorry, what was that? Introducing the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. If you encounter a black bear, do not run. It may stimulate the instinct to chase. Instead, make yourself appear bigger. Bigger. And speak firmly in a loud voice. Bush. Good boy. Head for the mountains. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity series between winning and losing, between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory and the fumes of defeat. In the NASCAR Xfinity series, there's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. The sports world loves the USFL. Here we go. This is the gridiron phenomenon that fans are going crazy for. Real pros. Real football for real fans. Birmingham, New Orleans, followed by Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. Saturday on Fox and FS1. Chicago's never experienced anything quite like this. The Chicago Street Race Weekend. For tickets and experiences, visit NASCARChicago.com. 63 laps to go. Kyle Larson out in front by 2.3 seconds from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear more driven. That's how far ahead he is. We had to go to the blimp to get the rest of the, the pack in the shot. I Man, think. he is stinking up our show, boys. Yeah, but you know what? I just saw him come off turn four, and I, I don't know how, I don't know how he kept it out of the wall. The inside wall I'm talking about, he was right up next to it. Because he's Kyle Larson. He is. He's a great Honestly, talent. Darryl, we've watched him all season. There is not a driver that has the car control that Kyle Larson does. I agree. I agree. Well, you certainly see it, you know, and, and and honestly, the year that he sat out, I mean, all the facets of racing that he was on sprint cars, late models, I mean, total dominant. And he if there was a race to be had, he was in it. Yeah. His butt was behind the wheel of something. And I think he put that to good use and, and took that confidence, brought it right back to the Cup Series, wins a championship and has never looked back. North Wilkesboro is the 199th track on which Kyle Larson has raced in his career. Oh my gosh. When he was a little boy, he was four years old, and he's playing a video game with his dad. He's, he and his dad are playing a video game. And he tells his dad, he said, I want to start in the back. And he, and he said, so why do you want to start in the back for? So I can pass them all. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie? discussing the feel for Kyle Larson. He's not a big fan of simulation. He said it this weekend. He doesn't always feel like it's as accurate or that it compares to actually being in the seat. You look at the rest of this field. They spent a few hours on this racetrack in simulation. I thought that was interesting. He goes by feel and he jumps from car to car. The week he's had, you guys, he won the Xfinity Series race at Darlington, a sprint car race on Tuesday, won the Truck Series race yesterday, then comes in here and turns this car around around that they didn't feel like had a hope. And if you ask him what setup is under the car, he'll say, go ask Cliff. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Doesn't care either. Never has none. <laughs> right. i tell you another funny thing about him is he doesn't know how to work on anything. It makes me laugh. <laughs> like, you know, we all grew up racing, working on cars. He grew up racing cars. Yeah, that's it. Pretty good at it, I know that. Half inch wrench. Nah, nah, I think that's a <laughs> toolbox over there. You get, I think it's over there. What Fred, Fred Junior's brother did to Herb Nab. 
Herb kept telling the handy miss, handy man. He finally took the toolbox over by the car and dumped it out. He said, "Here, get what you want." <laughs> Ninth place race here. Ty Gibbs trying to get to uh, Eric Jones and now Chase Elliott in sixth with Chris Buescher uh, just ahead. 55 laps to go. And of all those drivers that got penalized on that last caution, Christopher Bell has made it back to the highest, but he's only climbed back to 12th in that 20 car. Wow. Logano right behind him in 13th, also overcoming a penalty. Going past William Byron there, who is a lap down. Ross Chastain. Haven't seen much of Ross tonight. He is in 15th place. Uh, his teammate Daniel Suarez led twice for 55 laps early. He yeah. got that speeding penalty though on that last caution. That's right. Now I thought Ross would be a real contender, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be that way tonight. The number five has gone to victory lane in the Cup Series in Wilkesboro three times, all Rick Hendrick owned cars. Jeff Bodine in 1989, Terry Labonte in 1994. And the spring race of 1996, the track's final season. I'm going to go back to that open win with Josh Berry. I was corrected by the boss of, of Hendrick Motorsports after this opening because I missed this. They won five opens with five different drivers. It's pretty wow. cool. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Rick Hendrick did. <laughs> <laughs> he let you know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rick's a great guy. I love him. Want to wish Alex Bowman a speedy recovery uh, he is coming along well and uh, we'll see him back in the series before too long and what of Josh Berry he's been the super sub this year I want to give him praise kids done a whale of a job yeah. doesn't matter the task he's got in two different cars now granted was with the same organization at Hendrick Motorsports but has knocked it out of the park with both and I guarantee you you're going to see him in this cup series because of the job he's done this year filling in for those cars you know where he's from right no Hendersonville Tennessee. Where's that at? It's up by Nashville. Oh, really? You know where he cut his teeth, don't you? <laughs> Fairgrounds. Nashville Fairgrounds. Nashville where, Fairgrounds. Where, where, was that a good track for you? It was real good. Yeah. I won 12 times here. <laughs> All right. Do you ever <laughs> not know that? Do you know I don't know. His about, stats. Hey, Nobody else has been. I don't know, know how many times I'm won. I just, I just <laughs> mess with you. <laughs> you know, Mike, I feel like we need to set the stage because we've got 49 laps to go, so we're halfway through this second stint here. And you, obviously you can go the distance on fuel. Now remember the rule. You can only change one set of sticker tires in this second stage after that competition caution we had. I think we're to the threshold, especially with the look that the race has. If we get a caution, everybody's going to come get that set of sticker tires. I agree, Larry. And, there are and, a couple of fellows who are just really fighting for oh, grip well, here. Yeah, they are. That was a threshold that I was hoping that we wouldn't see, right? I, you know, I was hoping there would be a caution that would split this up and, and give, uh, you know, a, a chance for somebody to gamble. I think that's off the table now. You're going to have to. If it comes out now, you're going to take tires. Well, look what tires did for the five car. I mean, he drove from the back to the front, and he's been out front ever since. But much like that first half, right, of the race, that opportunity at lap 18 to come in and put tires yeah. on, it's not on the table now. Rick Hendrick, 10 all-star victories, 51 top fives, most by any team, just has dominated. Isn't that something? The all-star race. You know, for my career, it takes me back to the Jimmy Johnson era. I mean, it was five years in a row he won championships, and that all-star, that Charlotte racetrack in particular, that 48 <laughs> yeah. car was lights out. Oh, yeah. Well, what is it? Lowe's Motor Speedway then, wasn't it? And he was sponsored by Lowe's. I don't know if I can do it or not, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Darryl, just, I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying. I don't know. I just... He's down there in the pit somewhere. He'll probably see me when the race is over with. You know, I, Darryl's seen more black helicopters at racetracks oh, than, yeah. than I think the CIA owns. I think Larry was flying a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> but then they started disguising them. They were only black on oh, the inside. Yeah. Bell and Logano, 11th and 12th. After uh, having uncontrolled tire penalties, both of them coming toward the front, but 44 laps to go. Bubba Wallace has had quite a race, kind of a quiet race, but he and Tyler Reddick sit second and third, four and four and a half seconds back of Kyle Larson. Been fast all weekend long, both of those cars. 23-11 brought the, brought the grit for this racetrack for their drivers and uh, proofs in the pudding right there, second and third place. Not too shabby. 
Yeah, I saw Ken Slowski down there when we were, we were doing the driver introduction. He he really felt the same way I did about the 17. He thought the 17 was going to be the car to beat tonight. Chris Buescher sits fifth behind Daniel Suarez. So in the top five, two Chevys, Larson first, Suarez fourth, Toyota second and third, and Buescher the first Ford in the race in fifth right now. Then it's in there, in there, in there now. And Briscoe moving up. Chase Briscoe to sixth. This car's been so good on the long run. 41 laps to go. Kyle Larson in command and we'll take you once again box side by side. Remember how lucky we are to get to do this every week? We remember the racing. Allison, look for another way around. The action. I'm speechless. This is the greatest day of my life. The calls. They did it. Bring it around, Jimmy Johnson. The community. But when we look back, we also need to remember the men and women who serve this country and all they do to keep us safe and free. You guys ready? Come on in! Celebrate National Streaming Day with Fox Nation. Sign up completely free. There's no credit card required. But hurry, you only have this weekend to join for free. Celebrate National Streaming Day. Sign up at foxnation.com. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Devils and the Red Sox battle the Diamondbacks, or the Reds take on Swanson and the Cubs. It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. Summer's here, and with a new Toyota, you can go out and do all the things that make summer <laughs> summer, like getting ice cream, movie nights, <laughs> I'll keep it down, hiking with the besties, catching sunsets, or just plain catch. Go long. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. The Subway Series is taking your favorite to the next level. Like the number 20, the Elite Chicken and Bacon Ranch, built with rotisserie-style chicken and double cheese. I love what I'm seeing here. That's some well-coached chicken. You done, Peyton? The Subway Series just keeps getting better. The science of shine. Lightning fast with ultra durable, super hydrophobic results. Mother CMX line of car care products. The advanced science of shine. Saturday's baseball night in America on Fox. The Red Sox take on the D-backs or the Reds battle Dansby Swanson and the Cubs. Or you'll see the Cardinals Guardians. Catch the action at 7 Eastern on Fox and check local listings for the game in your area. 34 laps to go in the NASCAR All-Star Race. And the man on the move is the 14 of Chase Briscoe. He went past Chase Elliott a lap ago. Uh, Chris Buescher two laps before oh, that and he on to it. was just passing Daniel Suarez and went up the racetrack. It shows you that that was a prime example of the grip level in this racetrack. Got in at least a little bit too hot. Yep. Car come out from underneath of him, shot way up the track. Missed that grip strip I was telling you about. You got it, buddy. Kyle Larson, 3.8 seconds up on the field. How's it going? Like a little bit more of a hitch in one or two has benefited you. It's like a little higher in the middle and a little lower and straighter on exit. I mean, I'm, I'm very nitpicky right here. Just giving you a throw on what's good for you, though. Pretty much matching like what he's doing for one and two now. Don't have me in your head. You just need to do what's comfortable. Pace is still great. The constant pursuit of perfection is what it is. Here he is leading his what? The three second lead, and the, and the crew chief's telling him he might be able to do a little bit better. Give me a break, man. <laughs> Jamie Little. And Bubba Wallace, the man behind him, trying to track him down. Bubba in his third appearance in the All-Star race. Fifth is his best, but they just told him on the radio, from this point forward, we need to beat the five by a tenth to catch him. He's closed the gap a little bit, but I think he's going to have to pick it up a bit more. Well, the one driver who is doing that, Jamie, is Chase Briscoe. Uh, last lap, he was a tenth quicker than Larson. This lap, he was half a tenth. Now he's back in fourth place, eight and a quarter seconds off the lead. So he's got a long way to go, but uh, that number 14 from Stuart Haas, right now, fastest car on the racetrack. And has been for the last eight to ten laps. He 
must have told him that uh, if you got anything, you better start using it. Because we're running out of laps. Let's give you a comparison of driving lines between leader Kyle Larson and runner up Bubba Wallace. Kind of like Cliff Daniels just being nitpicky. Not much difference there. No. See him. That's where the difference is there. The Watch the forward drive. Yeah. Because you see he dipped down, hooked that uh, concrete patch, had both all four tires, the both rear tires right there. You see on the exit. Boom. That's a tenth and a half every single time. But Wallace and Tyler Reddick, who that lap was the fastest car on the track, are both making some inroads on Larson's lead. Josh. Yeah, the team just came over the radio and told the 45 cancel the save, and the 14 and the 9 are coming. It is go time for Tyler Reddick, guys. I mean, I think it cancel the save was out the window a while back. Worst words I ever heard in a car, DW. Did you ever get this and you're the fastest car on the track? Huh. Well, I'm eight seconds behind the leader. I hope I am. Yeah, yeah. I got a long road to hoe. <laughs> you know what? One well, of my drivers. Told why are they all in front of me then? One of my drivers told me. I said, "You're catching leader," and he said, "Why is he getting smaller?" Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate the optimism, coach. Yeah. But thanks, buddy. I'm not seeing it. Well, Briscoe has taken three quarters of a second out of Larson's lead, but is still in fourth, and that's why they told Tyler Reddick, "14's coming." I really don't think the five car has a whole, whole lot to worry about at this point. I think he's just riding. You're right. He's doing everything he can. Be careful of the lappers. You know, yep. that's a valid thing. He's yep. catching the lappers. But I tell you, at this point in the race, the lappers are being pretty cordial to him. They are. They're moving over most of them. Everyone I've seen, they just move out of his way. Well, we've had a lot of exciting all star races. Maybe one hot night. Uh, the first nighttime race at Charlotte was more exciting than this one. This big all-star moment. There's Daryl Waltrip waving to the crowd. Come to the line. And oh, what's this? I don't know how that happened. I didn't. I had nothing to do with that. Well, I was in the broadcast booth, and Neil Bonnet was with me, and Neil was hotter than a Fourth of July firework. He goes, I go, what, Neil? He goes, he clutched him. <laughs> Neil was your teammate. <laughs> Listen to him laugh. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. I'm just a driver. <laughs> Something happened, huh? I didn't wreck it. That's all I know. <laughs> 20 laps to go next time by, Regan. Well, Mike checking in with the 14 team of Chase Briscoe asked him, did you guys tell him to go or do something different? They said, no, the car is just coming to him. It started off the run too tight in the middle, and he was complaining about that. But here as a play, it has come to him, and it is very quick, continues to be very quick right now. And that number continues to drop for Chase Briscoe, that deficit to the leader, which is still four seconds first to second. 20 laps to go, I but I salute you, Daryl, because you had to win that race to be in a position for something crazy like that to happen. Thank you, Mike. I'm glad that I, I really didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, Junior huh. built that motor. I don't know what he did to it. I don't know how it happened that way. It just happened. I want to give a call to the rookie, Ty Gibbs. Remember, had to start at the tail of this field, transferred through the open. He is the highest running Gibbs Toyota driver right now inside the top 10 ninth. Just what he's been doing the last month or two, just below the radar, hitting the ball right down the middle. And he did a great thing here on the night of the pit crew challenge, which his team won. Yeah. And we interviewed Tide, and he named every one of his over the wall crewmen by oh, wow. name. I could never do that. Had a boy. I knew Hammond, that's about it. They were Hammond's guys. The thing they went wrong was Hammond's fault. The gap is steady at 4.2. Larson to Wallace with 17 laps to go. You know, it's funny, Mike. You, you, you think he's got a big lead. The pop car's got a big lead. And you think he's comfortable. He's just driving out to the finish. You you start to hear things, feel things, see things. Oh, yeah. That, that 
you, you don't, you, you, you're calling the crew chief. I think I got a flat there. No, I think I'm okay. I'm getting loose. No, I'm okay. And you just go crazy. You, 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 I mean, you're talking about a million dollars, for he, goodness sake. He is starting it. to get into some pretty heavy lap traffic. I think you might see him ride just a little bit. You don't want to catch them all bunched up just in case they get into one another. Something happens there. Let them get it sorted out. Catch them one at a time. Roll by them. You got a lot of room here. Be patient. Sixth place here. Suarez Blaney. I never got full throttle. Did you hear that? No. Spun the tires all the way down the straightaway. So we were basically 76 laps, green flag laps into this run. Listen to this thing up off the of two. Stay with me here. Eric Jones in eighth. He is uh, 15 seconds off the lead, and Ty Gibbs is almost right to him here. But based on how that 43 car was last night, and I realize we had some wet weather conditions, that 43 car was horrible last night, but here they are inside the top 10 as well. Pretty close pack here. If you're looking for something to happen, it might be in this group. I'm looking for something to happen. Anything, <laughs> I, Mike. I, I, Just give me something. I'm the same way. I'm looking this way. I'm looking every which way I can. I don't see anything going I on. I see a, an engine block down here in turn one. <laughs> right in the middle of the racetrack. There's, well, you got Suarez in front of Jones. Jones right in front of Ty Gibbs. And Joey Logano has closed up on uh, all three of them. Great. With 11 to go. This short of a race, you're just not going to overcome a penalty like that, especially with a race that's going caution free like this. Holy smoly. Martin Truex about to go a lap down here. He is 14th. Last car in the lead. He and Hamlin have fallen to the tail end of the lead lap. Did you see Hamlin's car when he crossed up off of that oh apron? The sparks flew out from underneath oh of it. That's the bottom now that we're talking about. That's why I asked you, is there something to do with the shocks or something? Make it a little bit more floaty. Uh, you know, take some rebound out, something to where that thing will float down across the apron and give this Kyle Busch and his five car the grip that he does. See, there it is again, Denny Hamlin, just bottoming out, concrete coming out of that thing. I definitely think you can do stuff, as I mentioned, with the shocks just to give it more compliance. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're stepping up the shocks, you're fast. I think sometimes you just don't get enough practice to really get things sorted out. All right, Larson gets past Hamlin. That leaves just 11 other cars beside the leader on the lead lap with eight to go. I'll tell you one thing, he's tipped on right now. He's not he's not he's not hustling like he was earlier. He's taking his time. Larson has a four second lead to work with. He gets by Brad Kozlowski in that six right here. He's got a pretty good gap for the next car. Yes. Four See it right there in front of him. smooth sailing from here. He looks at the inside of Brad. Brad's going to give way. That's exactly what the doctor ordered for this five. The rest of these boys they better hope for something to happen quick. It's about a half a straightaway up there now to the next car, which would be Christopher Bell, number 20. Christopher Bell is running 12th. And he's about to lap him. That's amazing. Yeah, the Gibbs cars in this second half, all but Ty Gibbs have really fallen off. Chastain and Logano are uh, trading a bit of paint. Well, they are, and they're getting after each other, too. It's going to look to the inside. Now, this is for 10th place. Pay attention here. <laughs> Four laps to go, and now a little gap opens up between those two. You surely wouldn't wreck him for 10th place, would you? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. Maybe Ross just wants to see a caution to see how this <laughs> thing will come out, too. 12 cars on the lead lap back to Christopher Bell. Kyle Larson 4.1 up on Bubba Wallace with three to go. Wow. I mean, Kyle Larson definitely wants to see that checkered flag, but the biggest flag he wants to see first is that white flag. That's right. We know we got us a race official. deal. Promise you. It's coming. All the way to the bank. 
You just got to go around one more time and then you're home free. Everybody's pretty spaced out here. I don't see anybody on each other's bumper. I think that's what you're going to see, Larry. One thing I will say, this Wilkesboro crowd, they have stuck with us all the way to the end of this thing. Here he is coming to the white flag. Make this thing official. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. He has won at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He won at Texas Motor Speedway. Fixing to win at North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. Yes, sir. Got NASCAR's return to North Wilkesboro will send Kyle Larson to victory lane in the NASCAR All-Star Race for one million dollars. Holy smoky. He just won a million dollars. A million dollars. Yeah. Won the truck race. All I can tell you is it'd be a good thing I, see, I had my seatbelt on. I'll be jumping out of that car. I said, give me a break, man. Buddy, that's what I talk, taking all their money. A million dollars. Bubba Wallace, very Great strong. Job, Great second. job, by team. Ready, boys. Tyler Reddick, third. 23-11, carried the flag for Toyota. Watch his burnout. Chase Briscoe, the first four in fourth. Chase Elliott, the second Hendrick Chevy in fifth. Ryan Blaney for Team Penske, Daniel Suarez for Team Trackhouse, and Eric Jones for Legacy Motor Club. Ty Gibbs for Joe Gibbs Racing, and Joey Logano for Team Penske. Your top ten. What are you doing way over there? He's going to burn it down all the way around here. This is his new deal. He's made it almost a lap. He ain't going to make it tonight. That left here look weak to me. He's, he's doing all right. He's going to be okay, I guess. Look at that. That's pretty good smoke show. That is. I like that. Hey, DW. We're past the half of a lap. <laughs> third oh, career, he's giving up on me. Third career All-Star win for Kyle Larson in his seventh start. He's won three of the last five All-Star races, and he's the only driver ever to win the NASCAR All-Star race on three different tracks. Hey, D.W. He made it. That's a burnout all the way around North Wilkesboro Speedway. Full lap. He ain't done yet. And poor rear tires say, God, I hope you're about done. That's the only car that would do that. I guarantee you nobody else's rear tires are that good. Saved a lot out there. Unbelievable. What a job, kid. 11th All-Star win for Hendrick Motorsports. Most all-time five drivers, including Jimmy Johnson with four and Jeff Gordon with three. And now Kyle Larson is a three-time All-Star winner. Wow. A million dollars. Holy smoke. He's 30 now. Can we still call him young money? Yep. I, I can. Okay. DW definitely can. <laughs> I'm young in my book. Don't go there. You can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What kind of celebration are we? We gotta have a celebration. Oh, we will. Come on. Well, here's Regan Smith. The Cup Series returns to North Wilkesboro for the first time since 1996. Kyle, you sweep the weekend, this weekend, this moment, and this racetrack. What does this one mean? This, uh, I can't even tell you what it means. You know, this is uh, my third All-Star win and my third different track. So this is uh, in a historical place like this. You, you guys in the crowd made this weekend so awesome. <laughs> we could feel the atmosphere all weekend. So. So much fun there. Um, that was old school ass whipping for sure. You know, we had a great car in the long run there and um, was just thinking that for sure there's going to be a caution, right? You know, I got out to a big lead and I could see everybody's cars are driving like crap in front of me. But uh, I cannot thank this five team enough. You know, we were we were god awful <laughs> all weekend uh, practice. I was like the worst on 30 lap average. Uh, went backwards in the heat race yesterday. Um, you obviously had some strategy work out there in the, the beginning, but we drove from dead last to the lead and, and checked out by, I don't know, 12 or 13 seconds and uh, then just could pace myself there that last run. So what an amazing car. Every, everything that my car did bad on Friday and Saturday did great today. So again, thanks to uh, the five team Cliff Daniels, 
Cal Stewart too. Cal, Cal Stewart's our, our engineer. We bust his balls all the time because every time he's at the track, something bad happens. So um, this one's for him. And uh, I told him the other day, he said he's going to like five of the next six. I, well, we're going to win five of the next six at least. So here we go. Kyle Larson wins the all-star race and NASCAR's return to North Wilkesboro. Margin of victory officially 3.8 seconds over Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, and Chase Elliott. What a performance, a dominating performance by Kyle Larson. Well, he said what it was, and that's what it was. <laughs> Old fashioned for sure. A butt whipping. <laughs> War out racetrack puts it right in the hands of a dirt racer, and that's exactly who won tonight. And I tell you, when I look at his numbers right now and the speed he's got week in and week out, we're halfway through the regular season, they look like they could be on pace to the same season they had a couple of years ago. I'm telling you, they are on fire right now. I'm going down there, and I'm going to find that magic wand. Because they had a magic wand, they waved over that car tonight. Because well, that you thing gave it to me. him. No, Ten I don't. I don't, know, I don't I'm gonna find it though. I'm gonna find out where it is. I'm gonna get it. Thanks. Thanks for joining us yes. tonight. <laughs> it was great to have you back, Darrell. It was fun. It's being, good it's to see so you three fun. back together. Yep. Good to have the band back together. Kyle Larson gave him a whipping tonight. <laughs> what a night! As NASCAR returns to North Wilkesboro. our Charlotte studio will have more coverage of tonight's NASCAR All Star Race. After the break. My first race at NASCAR race there went to Will County. I've seen this come back, it's amazing. It's, it's pretty cool to come back and be a part of history and take that to a different level. I'm a Ryan Blaney fan, but rooting for the track today. So. It's been a, a dream come true for all of us. It's, it's just a wonderful feeling to be here finally. It's very emotional. For millions of young people, Boys and Girls Club of America provides a safe place where science, technology, and NASCAR come together. Where the green flag waves on potential careers and the skills learned here excite, inspire, and build the foundation towards a better tomorrow. After all, great futures start here. Two times this weekend, that guy right there, Kyle Larson, driving to victory lane at North Wilkesboro Speedway. Big weekend for the 2023 All-Star winner. Dominating performance for Larson and that number five team. What a weekend it was for Kyle Larson. What a weekend it was for race fans across the board. The revival of North Wilkesboro. But, of course, it's the third time that Kyle Larson has been the million-dollar man. You heard him in his post-race interview at three different racetracks. Incredible. We know he's great. We know he's good. And tonight he proved it. Hi, everyone. Shannon Spake, Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain. What we saw from Kyle Larson out there was just dominance. And it wasn't exactly like an easy night. He had things he had to overcome. No, we talked about how tough it might be to pass at this racetrack just because it is so worn out. How do you actually get by somebody with Without crashing them and Kyle Larson textbook showed how to do that drove from the back after that penalty got to the lead all on his own no cautions to help him do that that was really impressive I mentioned to you when we were listening to that post-race interview from Kyle Larson that you don't normally see Kyle sort of like an elevated excitement <laughs> level he's usually pretty pretty calm you saw a lot of emotion from him. Yeah, and he's been in about every victory lane you can be in in any type of motorsport. So to see his emotion, mm -hmm. that just shows what this weekend meant to everybody. And he took away both the NASCAR wins from North Wilkesboro Speedway. <laughs> Still only Jeff Gordon and, and Kyle Larson have won there in the last 27 years. Pretty incredible. Yeah, of course, 11th All-Star victory for Hendrick Motorsports. And ironically, the last time we were at North Wilkesboro, it was Jeff Gordon in that 24 car that got the victory. Fans stuck around for hours after the race, after that race back in 1996. We're going to try to get you through some post-race interviews with drivers. We're going to start with Bubba Wallace, who's with Jamie Little. And how about that performance by Bubba Wallace? Brings it home second. Your best all-star finish. If you could have closed the gap a little bit more, what would have happened? I don't know. I think we needed the louvers and whatever chewed-up stuff they have on there. <laughs> no, just his capability throughout the whole run. Um, he could attack hard and then have something there at the end, so just um, if this was any other race, I'd be excited. But for a million dollars, you come up short and walk home with nothing. So tail tucked between our legs. But uh, all in all, just continuing to ride the momentum tra train, Jamie. Um, I want to get Columbia in victory lane. They've done a lot, and they came up with the best paint scheme here in the field. So uh, we come up one spot short. So congrats to Larson. Uh, he's been on a rail lately. So 
just have to keep it going. You know, now we show back up to uh, home turf and um, really got to keep the momentum going there and, and get ourselves deeper into the playoffs here. So excited to be where we're at right now. Just come up one spot short. Right, thanks. Bubba Wallace with a little jab there, right? <laughs> the jab at Kyle Larson and those guys. But seriously, I mean, second place for Bubba Wallace. We talked about it earlier that this is a team that he's just been there. Maybe not all of the results that he wants and certainly not the victories, but we've talked about him a lot with the momentum. We have. He's doing a great job. Best finishing Toyota, obviously. Uh, but I've been in those shoes before. When you're second and you're trying to run the leader down, and you know he's riding a little bit, right? Like Kyle Larson's got a big lead, had been dominant. You just don't know how much he's riding. So you're trying to push your car we were kind of watching those uh, gaps as mm -hmm. the laps were ticking down how much can he gain and he would gain a little bit and then Kyle would gain back double he would just push his car a little bit so when you're leading like that when you're Kyle Larson you're riding and your crew chief saying hey save a little bit and you're finally like hey man I'm lifting at the flag stand I'm riding as much as I can and the more you ride the faster you go the better your car hangs on on the long run so Kyle just dominant again but Bubba did a great job trying to run him down two Toyotas in the top three but not necessarily Necessarily the Toyotas that we thought it would yeah. be because you thought it would be Joe Gibbs Racing 23 11 with a great night. Third place for Tyler Reddick, who's with Josh Sims. Well, Tyler Reddick, you start the day 20th, you come home third. Solid day for you and solid day all around for 23 11. Yeah, you know, I, me and Bubba were just talking about that. You know, we, we practice here on Friday. Both of our cars are pretty solid. Just need a little bit on the balance, but yeah, the Beast Unleashed uh, Toyota Camry TRD was really fast. Just, um, I made a mistake earlier in the race, back in the in the first hundred laps, and let Kyle squeeze by, and he really mowed through the traffic. Um, and yeah, we we lined up obviously behind him on that restart, and we could kind of stay in touch, but he uh, you know, was able to just keep far enough away. And uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out how much you know me and Bubba were trying to figure out who to, how much to push, how much to save, and you know I had an opportunity to get around him, uh, 40 to go, and I just made a mistake, one of the few all night, and it put us behind. So uh, honestly, a good solid car. I. I thought the 14 and the 9 were going to eat us up, but, uh, you know, started to really push at the end there, and I had more left in the tank than I thought. So, wish I could have that back, but but solid effort by our guys and our team. You know, we stumbled a little bit in the pit crew challenge and uh, started deep, but we were able to claw our way, way through it. Billy Scott, everybody on the box did a really good job of getting creative with that strategy early in the race to get us going in the right direction. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to 2311, as I just mentioned, two of those guys in the top three. I mean, this is a really strong night for them. I know, listen, I know it's an exhibition, and we're going on to the 600 next week, but still a really great shot of momentum. It, it is, and, and you kind of look at this race and say, what do we take from this? How do we go? And, and momentum is definitely something you can take going to Charlotte. Uh, obviously, has been repaved way more recently than North Wilkesboro, mm, yeah. so the tire fall off and things like that don't relate. Uh, I heard one thing he said in his interview there, um, Tyler Reddick. He said, I had a little more left in my tank. I don't think I thought anybody <laughs> would have more left in their tank after a race on this track. After you look at it, you see the fall off. So I know, he, like he said, he wishes he could have it back to push a little harder, a little sooner there. Yeah, all right. The 2023 All-Star Race is in the books, but we're not ready to go home just yet, and we're not ready to put uh, close the chapter on this one. So we've got more post-race interviews coming from North Wilkesboro as we wind down the evening saying congratulations to Kyle Larson. We will hear from Chase Elliott on the other side of the break. Can we get a congratulations for the million dollar man, Kyle Larson, winning the 2023 All-Star Race. You see Jeff Gordon in the background celebrating uh, this victory. Hey, let's catch up with another Hendrick Motorsports teammate. We will do that in just a second. Here's the top 10 from today. Bubba Wallace, who we heard from Tyler Reddick as well. Chase Elliott rounding out that top five. He is with Jamie Little, so let's check in now. Well, Chase Elliott brings it home fifth, and I know, Chase, you had raced other cars here, different vehicles. How did this race compare to what you thought it would be coming back to a cup race? Uh, based on what we saw in practice on uh, Friday, I thought it was about kind of what we were expecting from there. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty anticlimactic, I would say, for the most part. But, you know, Kyle and Cliff and, and those guys are the – did a great job, um, you know, and, and really set the pace there once they took tires at the start and and, and controlled the event from there. And, and these races are hard to win, so they're not always going to be barn burners, you know, side by side, banging door finishes. Uh, but it doesn't take away from the fact that they're they're still hard to win, and that should always be celebrated. So uh, I thought we made our Napa Chevy better throughout the night uh, with the one pit stop we made, but I thought I thought we made it better. So. Um, yeah, I'll take it. 
All right, Hendrick Motorsports guy in victory lane, Chase Elliott smiling after the race, and, and of course, the revival of this racetrack. Pretty cool weekend. It's incredible, and, and it's not often that the atmosphere supersedes what you see on the racetrack. Normally, the action on the track is what takes the cake, but here at North Wilkesboro, just watching the reaction from the fans in the stands, I mean, they were pumped to be there. They're still pumped sitting in traffic right now. Like They're excited <laughs> they got to be there for the revival of this racetrack. So much work went into this, and I'm, I'm pumped to see how it turned out this weekend. Probably watching us right now on some of those apps while they're sitting in traffic and we've got more to come on the other side of the break. We're going to continue to celebrate this victory. We'll wrap things up and we'll start to look ahead to next weekend's big race, the Coca-Cola 600. Stick with us. We'll be right back. It's race day in Chicagoland for the NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series and all four professional classes are in action today under perfect conditions for the first national event at Route 66 Raceway since 2019. See all the action tonight after the All-Star Race right here on FS1. Get it, girl. Right there. <laughs> Kaylin Larson. I mean, this is so classic. Celebrating her husband's victory. I love you. I want to hang. Give me a call. Let's party. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just tomorrow, though, because I got to go to yeah. bed tonight. Uh, congratulations to Kyle Larson, the 2023 All Star winner, of course, to the entire family. Let's look ahead, right? We've had such an incredible couple weeks with Darlington and, and then obviously the Coca Cola 600 coming up next week. It's going to be big. It, it is. And how do you match this, right? The weeks in the Carolinas, you go right to Darlington, you go right down the road to North Wilkesboro and back to Charlotte. The, the guys that work at the shopper loving this. They got yeah. to be there at North Wilkesboro. Now they get to go to Charlotte next week. I tell you what, though, the rest of the field is so glad this was 200 laps <laughs> instead of 600 miles like it is next week. Yeah, next week, Coca Cola 600 Memorial Day weekend. Our coverage begins at 4 30 on FS1. Then we move over to Fox. Don't forget Race Hub. Trevor's on this week. Daniel Ooh. Suarez is on. Larry Mack. NHRA coming up next.